The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is a glorious overreaction Monday, January 17th, 2022. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And now we go. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Martin Luther King Jr. I think uh, at some point today, go ahead and look around, see somebody that might not be the exact same as you, have a conversation and understand that they have a story, they have a life, and they could potentially be an asset to your life as well. And hopefully that is what this show will be able to provide for you for the next three hours as we chit chat the weekend that was. Yes. This same game parlay holiday. The weekend that was super wild card weekend. Now, the boys are here at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor, at the Toxic Table, representing the pod. Thought, thought your parlay was going to get the same game parlay holiday off on a really hot start there. One of the Raiders traveled to Cincinnati to take on the hot, moxie-having son of a bitch, Joey Burrow in the Bengals squad. Mm. Now listen, this Bates dude in the back end deserves more more conversation. What a fucking ball hawk beast. Uh, but whenever you look back on the weekend while you were representing the pod, putting your parlay together for that game, what stuck out to you the most? And uh, how come we didn't win there early? Well, think? I mean, I think, you know, we want to take credit or not credit, but responsibility yeah, for, you, you know, not getting the ball rolling in for all the there other you. parlays <laughs> not hitting. I think that was on us. But look, no Renfro score, no Jamar Chase score, no Mixon score, no Waller score. It was all a bunch of guys that, you know, you didn't really expect to be showing up and playing ball. Uzama getting back into the paint. I mean, that's good news. Ty, I feel like you guys had a pretty good read on how that game was going to go. And although the Bengals do get a win, it wasn't how we expected it to happen. Joey Burrow puts those sunglasses on oh. after that game. Is anybody stopping the Bengals right now? They got the Titans this upcoming weekend <laughs> in beautiful Nashville. But goddamn, they look very calm, cool, and collected. I, I listened to the interview after the game with Joey B because I forgot I got to change channels to go to the next game. That's right. Ah. So they don't tell you that, by the way, because they kind of trap you oh, in their yeah. little post-game yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Right into 60 minutes. Oh, uh, here we go. Boom, boom, yeah. bang. We yeah. got you. Right. So I actually heard the interview that Joey Burrow did on the field with the pads on, and he said, uh, this isn't a big deal. We just got to move on and win the next game or whatever. I'm like, that's what I love to hear. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Because in that locker room, they're acting very different. Mm -hmm. Okay? And maybe out and about in the club of Cincinnati, hey. Woo. Hey. I. Hey. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> maybe from a socially distant standpoint they were having a good time celebrating the first playoff victory in the natty in 31 years the first team to win a playoff game without an indoor practice facility in 31 years cincinnati had to celebrate and be excited their fan base showed up early and very very drunk i feel like we could have hit that same game parlay, but in the end, what we took away from it was good for Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think that was kind of like the shining light of the whole thing. It's like, well, at least this game didn't also fucking stink because the Bengals are very fun to watch. Like, that, that's a team that for the next couple of years here, I think they should be a little bit concerned. I saw Zach Taylor was out at a bar giving the city of Cincinnati a game ball, people popping in, taking selfies. If he gets COVID and can't. Whoa, 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 I'm not. Whoa, 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 I don't want to. I don't want to rain on the parade just yet, but yeah, that that Bengals team is very fun to watch, and I think it, I mean you know I was Joe Burrow, obviously a dude, and you're thinking like, hey, this team could win the AFC, go to the Super Bowl, and then you know you watch the Josh Allen, it's like, oh, well, this guy's really good too. So that's the interesting thing, and we will move on to the next games. I just wanted to say, Pod, thanks for your effort, to put your mind together. We tried. Although right. your parlay did not hit, you were not alone in that department. And let's before we get to the sixty nine thousand two hundred and sixty one mm. betters that bet a alongside myself, Evan Fox, A.J. Hawk, and the incredibly talented Dirty at Drawn to the Game. Before we get to that, we got to talk about a couple of things. Raiders coach Basaccia, how's your family? Hey, how's your family? Richie. Hey, Richie, how's your family? How you doing, hey, Richie? You know, hey, Richie was spotted in his uh, hotel in Cincinnati with some glasses on that had, had the connections on the back there just in case they fall off. Mm -hmm. Can't can't move down the nose. Why? Because I'm focused. Why are you focused? Because I'm handwriting a letter. 
to every guy on this team saying, hey, thanks for being part thanks of the family. Right? Thank hey, you, right? Thank you football you know? right. Right. Yeah, First down, you're not so good, huh? Second down, you really turned it around. Huh? <laughs> How's your family, huh? How you doing? I tried to write a handwritten uh, notes to all the guys that were in our fourth down army the year that I uh, made the Pro Bowl. And I think we gave up zero yards returning when I was kicking off and punting for like the first 13 weeks of the season. We had a bunch of fakes that, that year. There was a lot of stuff. We were a tight unit. So at the end of the season, whenever I made Pro Bowl, I wanted to write them all and say thanks. I got four players in, and I'm like, God damn, hey. Yeah. And 12 Ooh, more. Hey, oh, yeah. my God. We got This is a lot of writing. I don't know how Richie Basaccio was able to do it, but I think that is what all the Raiders players were saying whenever they said they love this fucking man. Yeah. They love Richie Basaccio. They showed up for Richie Basaccio throughout the entire season. They make the playoffs over the Colts with Richie Basaccia and everything else they had to deal with. Derek Carr came out and said his future uh, would be dependent upon who they hire as a head coach. Is that Derek Carr telling the guy who has to battle against the IRS behind the scenes right now and the other owners, Mark Davis, like, hey, hire this guy. I'll be back. It feels like they love each other. It feels like they're growing over there. But with Mark Davis, we don't have a fucking clue. What's yeah, going to definitely not getting nobody, hired. Nobody has a clue what's going to happen. And a lot of people immediately think, well, if you hire this guy who's the interim coach, you're going to stink. Because there is a lot of stats and stat that, that. there's a lot of narratives. Stat stat that. There's a lot of instances stat stat that. where you hire the interim coach and then it doesn't work out for one reason or the other. But maybe Richie Basaccia has just been sitting, you know, with the gabagool. Mm. The matarela. With the bop and the boop and hey. Hey. Hey, boop and the bop and the Too far. Shake your pie. Too much. How's the Fazolini family? <laughs> hey. Up and bop and Give me hey, the don't. chicken parmesan. Hey, with the side of ball. Uh. That's way too hey, much. Hey, football itch, you don't take all of me. What if he's just been waiting? What, dude? <laughs> That was unnecessary. What are you fine. talking about? We're the first two were fine. Enough, dude. What are you talking about? Are you fucking great? The mozzarella, uh, it's all good. What are you talking about? You start Dude. making noises with no words behind them. <laughs> That's when we draw the line. Come okay. on. Listen, I've been in a lot of, now, after 23 and me, I've been at a lot of our dinners, uh -huh. okay? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I heard. I thought I was saying something. I thought only, uh, I thought you, you, Nick, you, Julia. Yeah. I thought maybe you, me, us, we were going to have a conversation there without all these guys. Yeah, that's why I was actually trying to be more. I thought Richard Basacci and I were kind of speaking to each other there. I thought he heard what I was saying. Hop, 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 hop. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you, you know eating I mean? dinner with? Toddlers? Huh? Infants? What? what? You're making baby noises. No. What? No. No. Speaking Italian. Shut up. <laughs> so hold on. Let me. <laughs> He passed the gravy, huh? All right. Hey, there you go. Okay, there you go. okay good on. start. All right. <laughs> hey, this stuff, huh? Yeah? Uh, 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 yeah. You probably seen me do that at an actual dinner. I mean, what are we even talking about here? There's a lot more noise going on with actual words. Well, I'm a, I'm not a great actor. I was trying to just put myself back into the seat at that table. Mm -hmm. Raymond Reigns is at the head of it. Yeah. What? Of course. <laughs> Anyways, what if Richard Basachi was just sitting back, uh, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. Pondering. Pondering. Okay. And I think the pinky ring would help you write that, those notes, because it kind of just locks in, you yeah, know? You just kind of sit that thing down. On. Prevents smearing, too. What if he's a great head coach? In the narrative that the interim head coach, who just took a team that was in complete disarray to the playoffs somehow, can't be a good coach because in the past it hasn't happened. That'd be sad. I hope... I hope Richard Basaccia gets to have plenty of up, 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 you know, over there in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. Nick, stop shaking your head. Wait, everything okay? He's a everybody? great representative. Who? Richard Basaccia? Yeah. He is. What you're doing, though. Yeah, he's not bebopping all over the place. Yeah, whoa, he whoa, is. Whoa, hey. whoa, whoa, whoa. It came hey. out of your mouth, not whoa. mine. Whoa. What do you mean bebopping? Nick? Anyways, the Raiders could look very different next Good. year. Congrats to them on making the playoffs. <laughs> Hey, literally, if they end up with Basaccia, mm -hmm. you know, as their head coach for the next 10 years and they're successful. They found love in a hopeless place. Yeah, How right. about it? Thank you, Rihanna. Banger. You know what I mean? Shout out to Rihanna. Mm -hmm. Shout out. And shout out to the Raiders. Literally, they probably thought, oh, shit, this team is about to get blown up. And Derek Carr, Basaccia, you know, Will Compton. Yeah. Of course. Playoff, Willie. 
Have you seen his social media? The boy, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the his, reenactment? Oh, the AB. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We immediately bet against the Raiders when playoff Willie really wasn't on a roster. Well, that's something to think about because there's another game that happened, and we'll at Tone Diggs, diehard Steelers fan. Last night, we saw Jackson Mahomes at the game. Mm. Yeah. We saw uh, Patrick Mahomes' wife, Brittany, misses. Uh. Mahomes at the game as well. And it was hard not to immediately see that the Steelers were plus 10 and a half at a time and live bet the shit out of the Steelers because if Jackson's, you know, doing his all thing and they're kissing and dapping with Patrick and he's distracted and everything like that's going on, it has normally been a tell that they're going to not play well. Well, that got... Disbanded. Yeah, put to bed. Well, Completely. Mm-hmm. Well. The Chiefs is the Chiefs. The Chiefs were the Chiefs. The Chiefs look really fucking good. They're so good. Big guys are scoring touchdowns that we don't know. Uh, shout out to... I look lady. With the spaghetti. I look lady. He was ready. He's a look lady. With spaghetti. He's a look lady. With a teeny. I like that. That was good. Yeah, pretty good for the bop ba da boom. Ah, come on. <laughs> they fucking slaughtered the Steelers last night. Yeah. I mean, early, I guess TJ Watt makes a play wide. Right. Right. Scores a touchdown. We actually said, hey, how do the Steelers win this game? Well, TJ is going to have to get a couple strip sacks early, score a touchdown or something like that. He didn't get a strip sack, but a fumble happened. He gets the ball. He slides in the end zone. Holy shit, are the Steelers going to do this? They got Mike Tomlin. They got Ben Roethlisberger scheme, and he's been there, done that. He is drawing up plays in the middle of the game. He is the only quarterback that will go over to two wide receivers over here uh, and also look confused. Oh, I figured out. Yeah, you two do this. Then he goes into a huddle with the other eight guys, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then he calls a play. He's just old school football player. Okay, maybe they got Ben. They got Tomlin. They got T.J. Watt. They got Minka still flying around. Joe Hayden's there. Okay, maybe the Steelers are able to do it. And then all of a sudden, you see uh, fucking full dance routines in the backfield. Then you see Travis Kelsey throwing goddamn touchdowns. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's oh, Buzzsaw City. Here we go. Keep it yeah. moving. The Chiefs is the Chiefs. But as a Steelers fan. Ben's last game. Congrats, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you, Seven. Hey, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Seven. Threw a touchdown down there to his left, and I actually saw him in his head go, that was the last touchdown I'm ever going to throw. Yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty cool moment to kind of watch that. At Tone Diggs, your thoughts on the bubba da for the Pittsburgh Steelers going forward, and how's the gobble you know? I wasn't going to do this, but I have to now. First and foremost, last night was a Colts fault. Okay. Mm. Go on. Steelers should never been in that position. Okay. That was the Colts' fault last night. And valid. you know what? Valid effort on the boys last night to be in a tie game with five minutes left in the second quarter. No one thought that was going to happen. And once again, they covered 14 by half. Once again, the Chiefs. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It might have been a tie ball game, yeah, but it was. I mean, the Chiefs just. Whoop, whoop, whoop. How you doing? Just everything we talked about the Chiefs for the last like three years. And we'd lose so much money because they would never cover. They would never do it. It would always be this grand vision of what the Chiefs are that we would have to bet upon. Because when you're trying to predict a game, you think to yourself, well, the Chiefs could just fucking turn this thing on, too, if they really wanted to. And then week in, week out, we'd end up here on Overreaction Monday. We got the Chiefs fucking took our money again. They won, but they didn't really do what they had to do. Patrick Mahomes is still top five quarterback in the NFL. Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, they still have absolute superstars, but all year is being chatted about these guys ain't performing to their potential and that's because the illusion of what the chiefs are is different than what actually happens week in and week out week in and week out they make big plays in big moments when other teams don't do it so that's why they can continue to win and continue to move on but they never really do those big plays in big moments all four quarters it just like comes in spurts it really got turned on. Like yeah, it. yeah, I mean, it really got turned on. And I don't know who they got next, but it feels like a fire hose has been opened up. Who do they have? Because it's Bengals, Titans. Bills. Buffalo. So it's Bills and Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. Bills we are going to blow them out. Hey, well, all right, let's get to that game then. Uh, the Bills are fucking wagon. Josh Allen is an absolute caboose of a man. Mm-hmm. He's impossible to stop. He is everything that you would hope that Carson Wentz could become. Yeah. Sure. And if you go back two years, two years, Josh Allen stunk. He was good. 
stunk. Carson Wentz still at the top. Carson Wentz, MVP player. How you doing? Keep it moving. Both massive dudes. Both move and extend plays. Both throw footballs, I guess, to people. Mm -hmm. Vastly different styles, though. This dude is the prototype, right? Oh yeah. yeah. This oh, is the prototype. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is what this is what people are trying to uh, find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big seems to be incredibly high football IQ. Yeah. Wired different. Very athletic, very competitive, and doesn't give a damn about it being freezing cold because he's from and well, I'm sorry, he's not from, but he went to school out in the middle of fucking really cold nowhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. Him flying around, dude. Moving. Full powers. Pulling guards, pulling the center. Hey, I'm going to be right behind you guys. Let's see if anybody wants to tackle me in negative 10 degrees. I'm 260 pounds. It is awesome to watch them. So I guess Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes will be an amazing game. Yeah. But how do you stop Josh Allen, I think, is a question that we have to kind of look at going forward because the Bills just buzzsawed the Patriots. Yeah. I mean. More so. Just absolutely said, yins are power right now. Yeah. Hey, Patriots. Well. Yins or Adidas. Well, yeah. Hey, Patriots, say hello to the man in the mirror, Phil Mickelson. Oh. That is what the Bills said to the New England Patriots oh. in that game. Oh. Yeah. They said, you are now no longer a piss. You are now number two of shit. Oh. Yeah. Wow. This is what you are in the AFC East, and that is what the Bills said. That's what Bills Mafia said. Who showed up, by the way? The Canadians couldn't get in because of all the rules and the rule changes and the protocol and the testing and everything like that. But Bills Mafia was through tables at about 9 yeah. a.m. Oh, yeah. getting ready for that. What a show. What a performance. What a team. Bildos made their way onto the mm -hmm. field. I, I don't know if there was numerous or maybe just one dong out there, but I'm happy nobody got their hands or mouths on that thing Bingo. that was involved with the NFL because I've heard these sons of bitches not only carry Omicron, but they, they do carry Delta. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, so the, the Delta Cron dong. <laughs> That was tossed on that field. Could have taken out the entire playoffs. But I did see one ref who seemed to make a right decision this weekend. Fucking an anomaly. Only one. Kicking the dong as opposed yep. to grabbing the dong. Smart. Right. Mm. Which is very smart because I don't know if COVID can go through your shoe. Yeah. But you put that thing in your hands, that thing might bite through, fight through the gloves and your mouth uh, shield. So oh, right. I don't know how the Delta Cron dong buildo got removed from the field. But I'm happy no players got Got COVID because of it. Bills Mafia showed up, though. The Bills showed up. The defense was unbelievable. That pick that Micah made yeah, was, damn good. was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And if it, wasn't, if it wasn't Bill Belichick, you know, this conversation about what happened to the Patriots there would certainly be louder. Oh, yeah. But we said this going into the week. I think I actually said it was my entire take. This is going to be a part of a documentary someday. Well, we had to lose that game. We had to experience it. We had to build or whatever the case. As a diehard Patriot fan, that was hard to watch, I assume. You expected it? Or as it got worse and worse and worse and they were just falling yeah. hi, 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 hi. on top of you, you just kind of had to sit there and take it, huh? Yeah, that was the by far the worst game I've ever seen the Patriots play, especially under Bill Belichick. I mean, they said that that was – or they didn't say. It was the first perfect game in the Super Bowl era. No punts, no field goals. They only scored touchdowns. <laughs> Downs. They were six to seven on third down, only had six real third downs. The seventh was the kneel down. So, I mean, it was pathetic. It was embarrassing. The Bills are very good, but Powerade, Gatorade, let's see if they can, you know, win a Super Bowl first, go to the, you know, conference finals. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. No, no, no. Obviously, no. we're not saying, East. hold on, no, hold on. We're not saying, like, you're comparing the Bills now to what the Patriots were. No. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, in that AFC. In East, the division. Yeah, in the division, sure. Feels sure. Like, Sure Absolutely. feels like it's it's a Don a new era. Yeah, in the division it definitely is, but I mean, are we gonna celebrate division championships? I mean, that's <laughs> well, just, who gives a well, shit. Like yeah. you gotta go win the goddamn Super Bowl or it doesn't really matter what happened. But no, it was embarrassing. Uh you like to see Mac Jones be the only guy who got off the bus for New England. So I mean that first drive was good, but then when Micah Hyde made that pick, it was like oh, Game over. Uh oh. There was a couple plays while we're watching this. There's a couple plays that are going to happen, and you're going to decide and see who's going to win the game. Mm -hmm. When he goes up and steals a home run there. Oh, yeah. That's a touchdown. Yeah. Pretty good ball by Great Mac. Ball. Not bad. Yeah. Pretty good ball by Mac. He actually. played well. 
What a catch, though. Yeah. What a catch by Micah. The defense, who had zero pro bowlers because they stink in Buffalo, but they were the number one defense. And I did not go to the game, by the way. Well, Thank you, Jordan Porter, for the offer. Okay, Good sure. But I said somebody else deserves those seats. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Somebody sure. that will. Fitz yeah, Magic, Fitz Magic ended up mm-hmm. going, I think. Bingo. Fitz Magic being yeah. there is awesome. I love that. He's retired then. This is him announcing his oh, retirement. Oh, it's got to so. be. Hey, I, I've seen people at 45 different organizations now at this point do stuff that is cool. I kind of would like to do that a little bit more with my life. And if you hear any of the anonymous alleged stories about Fitz Magic, he likes to live. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He likes goes to go down fast. fast. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So park. going shirtless in negative 10 degrees or whatever uh, is certainly something that old Fitz Magic would do. Uh, but I love that atmosphere. Yeah. I love the environment. I love what they did. I love Wild Card Weekend. Let's move to another game. Niners, Cowboys, Ooh. here we go. And I feel like we were potentially... I don't know. I talked to Gumpy, I think, over the weekend, and I talked to Connor. And I didn't know if it was because we live in our own little silo here, you know, our own little world sure. mm-hmm. with our blinders on like a horse race. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the horses in a horse race have blinders. You know why? Why? Can't get distracted by looking at anything but the road ahead of you. That's mm-hmm. right. Keep your blinders on. We have our blinders on here. Sure. So I didn't know if it was because of that or if it was a real narrative happening everywhere else. We all like the Niners. Oh, yeah. Love. We, everybody, everybody liked the Niners in our world. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point where we were actually having conversations where I was like, ah, too many people like the Niners. I mean, these are underdogs traveling into Dallas. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they've had a couple games where they've been healthy. They, they look good. But why does everybody in our world, everybody in our world was like, Niners are the team. Niners are the team. Now Ian Rappaport tried to slip in the Eagles maybe mm-hmm. to do whatever to Tampa. And the Eagles are staring down a vastly different future. And Nick Sirianni said, hey, listen, we're going to get knocked up. We're going to get impregnated. That's right. Okay, we're going to have to battle for nine months, maybe three trimesters. If we're lucky enough, a baby will come. And when that baby comes, we get to mold it into whatever it could potentially become. And I think that baby will be changing this offseason with three first-round picks in this upcoming draft. Mm. I think that's very safe to say. Also, one thing that, you know, unfortunately got brought to light is when you're not playing the Jets, the Giants, and the Washington football team every single week like we did the last, you know, six or seven weeks down the season and you have to play good teams, sometimes you get exposed. And what were you what talking about getting knocked up? What was that all about? Well, in life, sometimes you are going to get knocked up. And the more times you get knocked up, gives you the opportunity to get back up. So, you know, yeah, we got, I mean, realistically yesterday, it was 31 nothing at the end of the third quarter. If they would have wanted to, they could be a 65 to nothing. So I'm glad we at least got a couple points on the board. Jalen's the guy going forward. Or is he? I don't know. Yeah, see, I don't know. That's that well, last we do one, have coach. three first-round picks, so, you know. And we'll dive Ooh. into that game in a little bit because that is how we'll wrap up this first run about Super Wild Card Weekend in the same game. Barley Holiday. That doesn't sound as joyful today as it did a few days ago. Well, more summer, but we'll talk about that game in a little bit. And Coach Sirianni, they did you no favors by just running that thing back a couple of times, too. Yeah. You just had one slip up, knocked down, and then knocked up. Then all of a sudden, people like Ty, <laughs> people on the internet are going to be, oh, here we go, Menor and mm-hmm, sure. all this other stuff. And then now he's knocked up at one point. Sirianni had that team playing good against teams that weren't that great. Mm-hmm. They got in there so much so that Ian Rappaport actually said, look for the Eagles to surprise the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It could happen. And we respect Ian Rappaport. Oh, yeah. Okay, he's an insider. He does what he's got to do. But he was the only person that – when speaking of underdogs maybe winning or wild cards having their weekend, he was the only one that wasn't immediately like Niners. Everybody in our world thought the Niners were going to beat the Cowboys, and they did. How come that was the case? Is it because the Dallas team that is littered with superstars and everything that you could possibly dream of having as an NFL franchise and program you have down there in Dallas? Obviously, they have a home playoff game. The NFC East does stink, but the Dallas seemed to be much better than they had been in the past. All these years of hype and hype and nationally televised game because Jerry walks into schedule makers and goes, you're going to put the goddamn America's team right there fucking 8 o'clock, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. And if you don't, there's some other pencil pusher we can fucking move <laughs> yeah. right into this spot. They are on national TV every single week. 
They have so many superstars, you know, names that are in, in commercials and bright lights and literally chatted upon every single day on any of the main networks. So you think to yourself, Big Mike McCarthy, he's been able to win a Super Bowl diner. Big Mike McCarthy comes into the fray, Kellen Moore, Dak Prescott, Zeke, everybody's healthy. How you doing? Keep it moving. Micah Parsons, not only a rookie defense player, maybe defense player of the year as a whole. Yeah. They're at home hosting a playoff game. All of... Cowboys Nation is there and excited. And upon the game beginning, I think we all were like, yeah, Niners are going to fucking do this. You're right. Niners are going to do this. Niners are going to do this. Then all of a sudden, there was a glimpse of hope from the Dallas Cowboys. They got a little bit hot. Jimmy G had an untimely situation. We're like, oh, no, that's Jimmy G. The overthrow skis are about to get Jimmy G ski, just like it did in the Super Bowl ski when he overthrew Emmanuel Sanders, which led to a conversation for the next three months on whether or not Jimmy G stinks. That three-month conversation has now gone on two years yeah. because of one overthrow in the Super Bowl. He did it just the other day in Dallas. Oh, no, Jimmy G overthrew. Throwski, this is a bad, bad situation for the Jimmy G family, which there was an abundance of oh, yeah, that's right. down there in Dallas. I think they actually walked in whenever the doors opened for the star and people were sprinting in like mm -hmm. it was Walmart or whatever. Yeah. I think they actually say, hey, where's the gabagool? Huh? Where's the hop yeah. hop hey, hop 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 Hey, go gobble ghoul, huh? Go gobble ghoul on this one. Hey, good congrats boy. on the gobble ghoul. Huh? But then Dallas came roaring back, yep. and we thought Dallas was going to maybe win it. Holy shit. Is Big Mike, Dak, and Jerry about to have the story of the weekend by coming back and stealing victory from the jaws of defeat? Is that what the Dallas Cowboys are about to do? And then we saw a ref Debo Dak <laughs> swat the ball in two different spots. Spike, kill, Ref, game's over. That's it. Sorry about it. Play football better next time. Jog off the field. Shit get thrown at the ref. Lawrence actually uses his helmet to bat one of the bottles yeah. that was being thrown at the refs at the same exact tunnel that the Cowboys exit through. What a colossal collapse there at the end. An embarrassing end to a season that was hyped up to be much different than the ones in the past that were hyped up to be great. This was supposed to be a run. And now... It's a laughing stock, basically, all uh -huh. offseason. There's people saying Big Mike needs to be fired. Yeah. Dan Orlovsky. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This morning. Right. Dan Orlovsky says, how does that play even happen? you got to get a new coach. Now, we don't think Big – he he wasn't the only one. But there's everybody calling yeah. Big oh, Mike's yeah. job. Oh, yeah. Everybody's calling for Big Mike's job right now. But all season, Big Mike wasn't the one getting credit for the offense being good, right? It was yeah. Kellen Moore. That's right. Yeah. So Kellen Moore's calling all these plays all season – then it gets to the final play call of the final game of the season in which it ends up horribly, and all of a sudden, Big Mike needs to get the fuck out of there. Now, I don't know Big Mike other than the fact he's from Pittsburgh, so I probably know a lot of his tendencies in life. I've never met him personally. But Big Mike and them have been terrible at time management all goddamn year. Yep. So for it to end this way... It's kind of a thought of, oh, maybe this is something they should have been working on or have to work on going into the future. But I don't think Jerry's going to be firing Big Mike. I don't think that's going to happen. But there is definitely going to be an entirely new operation about time management, I would assume. No, I don't think he's going to be fired. I mean, he kept Jason Garrett for all those years. Well, it's because Jason Garrett was part <laughs> yeah, of the family. Yeah, right. 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 um, I think Jason Garrett is my son. You know, I didn't have a child with that particular shade of red hair, but you get it. The I believe the last play was kind of an accumulation of things. There was the fake punt, great call, but then you you keep your punt Strike, team out there. Strike, by the way, and you get the uh, delay game off that. Your guys were jumping. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Day. Let's talk about that fake punt. So, I pitched this idea to Tom McMahon, and I think it might have got the Chuck. I might have pitched it to Chuck. I'm not sure. We run a fake punt. Okay, successful. I'd like to run hurry up because after a punt. Basically, there's always going to be a transition of people, special teamers off, defense on. If we catch them in the middle of a, a sub, let's just snap it and we'll just throw a deep ball to one of the gunners that is lined up at wide receiver. You either have too many men, or if it doesn't happen, guess what? Just take a delay game. Now we have first and 15, but we were supposed to punt the ball to the other team anyways. 
I don't know exactly what they were planning on doing. Seemed to be a little bit of a clusterfuck out there. But I enjoyed the thought process of like, yeah, we should run a hurry up here. And if you just so happen to keep one of your good guys at Gunner somehow, you maybe even have a free shot at a one-on-one -on, -one on a corner, which isn't necessarily your starting corner. That might be your fifth or sixth corner who's just very good at jamming people up against one of your studs. Uh, so they were getting a lot of heat on the internet by people. Oh, why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's like, well, this is next level football. Okay. And you are, you know, you're probably a fan of the high school game or the college game. But next level IQ here, whenever you're playing fucking chess, you got to account for what the next move could be. If you get a fake and there's, uh, you know, chaos. Now, for instance, that fake happens. They run hurry up. The ref grabs K-ball, throws K-ball out, brings in regular ball. Right move, by the way, by the ref. Then they sit over it a little bit, almost to give like, is everybody okay thing. They, nobody subbed for Dallas, so mm -hmm. there's no reason to sit over the ball at all. I think that potentially led to a little bit of Sam Fran going, ah, what's going on? Okay, we got to figure it out. Everybody stay on the fucking field. Great coaching on all sides, I think. Execution didn't work out as well. It looked a little bit ugly, but you gain another first down, so who gives a fuck? Back to your point. Correct. Agree. But they did get the delay game there. Yep. They had numerous offsides, false starts. The uh, they had some. How many penalties? Seven. Fourteen. Four, fourteen. Oh, what was uh, tied for? It the might have been seven record. pre snap at one point oh, or okay, something like is, that. Yeah. But then they had like the blatant holding on the defensive line and the the unfortunate hands to face. That stuff happens. But it was like all game long, and they obviously the Niners were trying to give them the game. They dominated the first. Like the Niners were dominating the game, and then they made some mistakes on their own. Yeah, it's just interesting how, you know, the it, those moments, you know, what do they say? It doesn't show up till it shows up. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't yeah. get you until it gets you. It's one of those moments where they've been fucking up time management all season. Yes. You know, all season they've been fucking up situations, whether they're calling timeouts when they shouldn't, running out of bounds when they shouldn't, staying, whatever the case. There's been situations throughout the season that if you look back like Blue's Clues, there would be a litany of things that would say, how would they fuck up the last play with the clock? It's like, <laughs> well, just go back and look. It's been there. That has to be addressed. But also... Dak slides five yards shorter, yep. probably fine. Probably fine, right? Yeah, probably yeah. get the playoff. Well, Mike McCarthy said afterwards, he said, you know, would you rather have a Hail Mary or five goes from 25? Huh? <laughs> so. Think about I it. I mean, I guess that's right. The closer you are, mm -hmm. you're – that's, uh, I mean, hashtag well, that's, that's, like the, that's like the would you rather have three or seven. I'd rather have had the Hail Mary than no play at all. Well, yeah, and then we can dive into it even further. And, and Dan Orlovsky said that there's a 9-1-1 play <laughs> sure. that they should have called in whenever they realized there wasn't going to be enough time to snap it and to spike it. I don't think they even got the snap off in time. There would have been massive penalties because yeah. there yeah. was people lined up off sides. If they were to review that, let's say they did call it 9 one is how Dan called it. I've never been in those meetings for like the, oh, shit moments on offense so yeah. i don't know what the 911 call or whatever he said it's pretty basic in every room which i would assume is accurate that that you would have something i think even if they have success if they snap that thing after the ref sets it twice and swim moves dak and is the farthest away ref the the ref that is the farthest away and i understand they all have their own jobs and positions and uh you know there's an entire process -y that has to happen with them but that ref runs in from the farthest away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the head ref's closer, the side ref's closer, this ref down here is closer, but there is a process. You know, ump or whatever has to set the ball, do the whole thing. But why is he so far over there? Who knows? He's got to ref and do his job as well before worrying about them calling a play that makes, you know, little to no sense. I assume while Dak is running, this ref is like, come on, Dak, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Slow down. <laughs> Dak, if you're going to go down, you better go down now. And then as soon as he goes down, oh, uh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Move, Dak. Let me jump through an offensive line here. Then I got to look at where the ball is supposed to be spotted. And if you watch this thing back, those two refs on the side have no fucking idea where the ball is supposed yeah. to be spotted. So wherever the ball gets spotted, they just kind of slide to okay that's good for us we'll go there i don't even think they get that off now if that play goes and it works and he throws a touchdown to somebody somehow that would go to review they had four or five people off sides because a lot of people were lined up on the first one just a massive clusterfuck that makes you ask how is that how your season ends and jerry jones who is 
you know, not scared of a soundbite. Mm. We'll probably be talking about this for the next three months. Yeah, well, like you mentioned, it's just a microcosm of what they've kind of done all season when they haven't been successful. Like we've been saying time and time again, like, hey, eventually this is going to bite him in the ass. Like, and you look back, like McCarthy has a history of doing that when he was with the Packers, and just every once in a while, you know, Rodgers or whoever he had would be able to kind of mask those time management issues and. Dak didn't play great yesterday either, but I mean, you know, like eventually that was going to bite him in the ass and unfortunately is in the most important time of the season. I'm now, you know, scared that, uh, that I have to address something that happened. (laughs) Uh, All right. So as we and FanDuel had our, you know, negotiations that everybody heard about, Towards the end, there was a lot of talk between me and the risk and trading department who we've actually gotten a chance to meet and the head odds maker, John Sheeran, who joins Hammer Don like weekly at this point. You know, there was an entire situation about, you know, hey, I'd like to get to know these people a little bit more. Like, hey, who are we working with? Who are we working, you know, against? Who are we battling against? And by the way, we can be friends. Sure. Sure. We can be friends. and I've always been a person business-wise that says, like, hey, if we get along, there's probably a much better chance of us having a better relationship than not. And I know that some people's negotiations are like, I'm coming in to burn it down. I'm coming in. You're, you're not fucking us over. We're fucking you over, that whole thing. I, that's not how I enjoy doing things. I, I, I would much rather be like, hey, whenever I ask for like blah, blah, blah in this, like, this is why I'm saying it. So when this does happen, you know, I want you guys to hear it directly from me. So it was a nice thing through the negotiation to kind of get to know these people that we're battling against and those who are setting the lines and why they're setting the lines and how they're doing it and the boosts that they're putting up that are winning more often than not in our boosts and what works, what doesn't. It was a really cool little experience and it's an exploration almost into the relationship that was FanDuel being our exclusive sports book before signing this new four-year, three-year deal. So I felt like we were in a better position to go ask stuff because now they understand us a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So now I know what, hey, they're like, listen, our same game parlay is a weapon of ours. All right, our our same game parlay, the tech, now you can put two same game parlays together. Mm. We're the first to market with it. Like the, I don't want to say the nerds at FanDuel, but the nerds at FanDuel that are back, like they're very, 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 very proud of the same game parlay, the execution of it, everything like that. And I had like big respect for it because we enjoyed the hell out of it. Now, we were doing the risk-free Thursday night football same game parlays because of how good it was, the experience that it was, but it became a heartbreaker. Yeah. Oh yeah. It became a heartbreak. It's tough. Because these same game parlays, as you're piecing them together, you start thinking to yourself, oh, that's possible. That's possible. That's possible. And oh my God, we need one more maybe just to cook this thing up a little bit. There was rules and guidelines. If we're going to promote this to everybody on our app, it needs to be at least plus 400 and it needs to go, whatever the case is. We can't have, you know, the big promotion for these same game parlays that we think, you know, a lot of people are, you know, at like plus 250. We, yeah. we this yeah, no, can't. No. They have to be more than plus 400. So figuring out what to make it a plus 400 thing so that fans don't want to promote it. And then, by the way, also it was risk-free on Thursday nights, you know, and that experience mm. ended because of how heartbreaking it was. How do we get back into it? Okay, well, I'm going to need I'm gonna need a little bit of money back from people, you know? So like, all right, cool. We can give a bonus of 50% back up to $100 or whatever, but we can't do it for everybody. It has to be tiered systems. I'm like, cool, when's this going to happen? They're like, well... How about uh, whenever, when, when would you like it to happen? I'm like, wild card weekend sounds like the best time to do this. Fandle's like, you're right. So then we get into this whole same game parlay holiday. An entire agreement was made. A lot of conversations were had about how we do this, you know, because they have to run their business. We have to run our business. Our businesses are not the same, but how can we meet in the middle to create something awesome? Same game parlay holiday was born. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Myself, Evan Fox, AJ Hawk, and Dirty put our minds together, and we felt very, very good about the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It was playoff time. They're about to flip this switch. How you doing? Keep it moving. E A G L E S Eels. 
Fly, Eagles, fly. fly. The fuck out of Tampa with an L. Uh Okay, that is what we thought. That was our entire conversation. No offense to Sirianni. No offense to the Eagles. But this is levels to this shit. And you're playing against Tom Brady at home in the playoffs with a bunch of OGs. And this game matters. So how do we... How do we cook up a, a same game parlay that we can be an additive to the same game parlay holiday that we can really fucking take them for it? Well, we think Tampa's going to win by at least three, so we'll do alternate spread, minus two and a half. Check how you're doing. Keep it moving. It was a lock before the game even started. Yep. Well, Rob Gronkowski, touchdown. Check. That's a lock before the game even starts, even though everybody said he hadn't scored since like week 13 or week 14. It's the playoffs. And Kenny O'Brown, Tom, just had that entire thing. Gronk is Tom's guy. Last week, he goes back on the field to throw him money or throw him a ball to get him his milli. He a milli dollars, a Uh milli dollars. Now, Uncle Sam also got about 480,000 there, (laughs) but whatever the case, Gronk catches that. Tom Brady was going to find Gronk in the end zone of this game. Check. That's a lock. Wide open, by the way. Play action. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boom. Easiest touchdown in his career. Who else? Mike Evans. You know, Antonio Brown does his entire thing. He leaves. Kind of leaves us. Chris Godwin gets hurt. That guy was (sighs) a blue guy. Mike Evans has been a G here. Yeah. Mike Evans has been with us since the beginning. Mike Evans took a pay cut to pay other people. Mike Evans is an anomaly. Mike Evans is a freak. Mike Evans is going to score a goddamn touchdown. Check. That was a lock before the game even started. Boom. The issue with all those things being locked before the game even started is that the odds were not that great. Mm -hmm. Uh Had to get them above plus 400 at least, and they had to stay above plus 400 no matter how many people bet. So then we started thinking back to last postseason. And last week... There's this little tiny flash lightning white guy mm. named Scoot Scoot Scotty Miller. <laughs> Scotty Miller is almost a duplicate of every small white that Tom Brady had thrown the ball to over the years and years and years in cold ass Foxborough. Yep. He just happens to be faster. So I'm not saying that his football IQ is the same as Julian or Amendola or Wes's or anything, but said white prototype in Tom Brady's offense has been there for a long time. He was hurt. He came back, got the ball. Now it's the playoffs. This dude is going to get a ball. Eight and a half yards is the receiving yards. Okay. Eight and a half yards. Scotty Miller's so fucking fast. Eight and a half. He gets one. It's going to be 15, 13, 17. It's probably only going to be one or two balls. It's going to have to happen, whatever the case. First quarter, he gets a ball. Holy shit. Is he a part of the actual strategy tonight? He gets tackled at eight yards, Mm. says the ref. Mm -hmm. If you watch that play back, I think it's very evident he got fucking nine. Yep. yards but it didn't matter at the time because it was first quarter and they were just marching right down the field there's the first down there's him laying down there's multiple photos to show his back flat at nine yards where the ball is that would have been a winning same game parlay holiday before the fourth quarter even began if this ref spots this at nine yards now i don't particularly like this one white up here on the sideline <laughs> pointing four yards back okay that guy Who's pointing? I don't know if he says this guy's hurt or if he's saying this is where the ball, where he was down at or he stepped out of bounds at. They end up spotting him at eight yards, which makes no sense. Should have been nine, but whatever. That's the first quarter. He, or second quarter, I'm sorry, early in the second quarter. He's going to get the ball again. Yeah. And Tampa Buccaneers just start motorboating Eagles. Mm-hmm. Killing them. Dog walking. Oh, yeah. Hit, hit, hit. Hit. Sirianni talks about that dog mentality. We got a bunch of dogs. Well, they were all on leashes yesterday. Yeah, they were. And Tampa Bay Buccaneers were just doing this. Okay, this is what the Buccaneers are doing. And those dogs were doing a lot of things, throwing the ball to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, fumbling through that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Those dogs were not exactly acting right, but they were somehow maintaining at least a close enough distance where Tom Brady continued to go on the field because I thought at the end with the fourth quarter starting, there's going to be a Blaine Gabbert sighting. Yeah. And Blaine Gabbert's going to throw the ball to Scotty Miller. All we need is one more fucking yard. And then tick, tick, tick. Tick, 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 tick. Numerous possessions happen, and all of a sudden, Scotty's nowhere to be seen except for on the fucking punt team where he's almost breaking his ankle every single time. Then the fourth quarter, I'm standing less than six inches away from the television. I see those arms taped. I see little Ten pop his head into the huddle. Oh, my God. Scotty fucking Miller, dude. And then I see Tom hit 
hit Scotty Miller in the stomach and he goes, Scotty, over here. Scotty still goes to the wrong side. He goes, no, Scotty, over here. Mm. Oh my God, Scotty's getting the ball. <laughs> Scotty's getting the ball. <laughs> yeah. I was about to go ape shit. I mean, a plus thousand bet, okay? Yeah. Oh. Plus thousand, which is massive odds. Would you like to know the chance of hitting a plus thousand bet? Please go ahead. Nine percent. Okay, oh. so we're we're at plus a thousand. It was at plus eleven hundred at its highest, plus eight hundred something at its lowest, but it hovered around plus a thousand. Sixty nine thousand two hundred and sixty one bets. Scotty Miller over here. Tom says, and I go, yeah, come here, Scotty. Fucking end around handoff, nine yards rushing, okay, eight yards receiving. There was another play where he ran a quick out, and Bernard ran a quick out. Uh -huh. And some reason, Tom Brady didn't even look Scotty and Gronk's way. He threw it straight to fucking Bernard. So here we stand at the end of same game parlay holiday with zero winners and we lost by a fucking half a yard yet again and I'm reminded why we stopped promoting these same game parlays. Yeah. I was broken last night. Yeah. I tried to watch that Nickelodeon show. I said, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna do it. Where's Lex? Well. Where is Lex Lumpkin? But also, I don't think anything could have brought me any joy at that moment. I took a walk, went down to my basement, yeah. put the Oculus on, and fought two people. Nice. Same game parlays are not for the faint of heart. No, no, no. not at all. The same game parlay holiday took us on quite a ride. And we appreciate everybody so much for riding alongside of us on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And we appreciate all the effort of all the players that we had bet on. And we understand that Scotty Miller doesn't get to decide how many yards he gets receiving. But God damn it, Scotty, keep your feet and pick up 15 there. We're not even asking this question. One time. Come on. You did an incredible job picking that same game parlay. The Tom Brady Neals. Oh, yep. man. That was like a plus 700 or something. Michael Pittman Jr., that was like another plus 600, uh -huh. plus 700. Wide open, gets tripped up. It's heartbreaking. And I'm being called, you know, a sellout, and I'm doing this for FanDuel. Those are the ones that piss me. I, yes. Instagram reported me for a comment on my own post. What? Yeah, because a guy wrote this big, long, grandstanding comment about how, you know, I continue yeah. to Take your money from us. Bootlick FanDuel and steal money from his fans. So I, in this moment of me walking around the house, okay, going down to the basement, getting the Oculus on, and throwing hands and bombs at some sons of bitches in there who had no idea what Scotty Miller did before I got in that room. They had no idea. I crow hopped into the first fight against fucking dumbass Joe. Bang! I was so mad. But it's set up for everybody to say that we don't care, we don't want to win. I fucking wanted that. That would have been a record. That would have been the biggest hit in the history of sports books. Oh, yeah. But instead, as Foxy reminded us all in a text last night, yeah. every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And if 69,261 bettors are on one side and you win, that's the biggest win in the history of sports betting. And if you lose... It's the biggest loss yeah. in the history of sports. It's right. By far. It's messed up. We got to get to a break. Oh, I have some news. What's that? Uh, FanDuel's going to refund everybody that was a part of our same game parlay, the 69,261 oh. of them. Not because it was a bad beat. They do not want to set the precedent. Not because they saw how beat up I was. They received some text messages. They sent me some text messages like, hey, sorry about it, dude. I'm like, you're not sorry. Yeah. Okay, you are not sorry. But because the spirit of the holiday, they said. Well, that's nice. It's the least Good they people. could do. Now, I don't know if they would have done this if any of the other parlays hit, but since <laughs> none of our parlays hit and we're oh. off by half a yard, it's not a bad beat refund, they said. We are not setting the precedent as that. It is strict just for the holiday season that is the same game parlay holiday and I'll tell you what it doesn't necessarily make me feel better because I still would like to win but I am pumped that by tomorrow I believe or Wednesday now it's 69,000 some votes uh, everybody will be getting their money back and we appreciate everybody thank, thank you everybody thank you everybody, thank you. Oh, everybody. so no, uh, I thought you were a sellout though I thought you were taking the money from the poor giving it to the rich I thought you were a bad guy <laughs> That, that guy, he doesn't even know it, too. He just did it just to get it. He has no idea that as I read it, I was like, <laughs> oh.
I wish I knew this motherfucker. Yeah. That, I was so mad. I was so, I was so, I did not expect to be that tore up about it. Just like the Colts losing to the fucking Jags. I didn't expect to be that tore up about it. And I was. This one I couldn't have expected. Now, in the first half, no Gronk Tud, no Evans Tud. Nope. I mean, the Bucks were up. Scotty, Scotty had eight, eight. yards. Yeah. It did not look great at halftime. But then all of a sudden you see Gronky get in the end zone. Uh -huh. And then Evans get in the end zone. Mm -hmm. And it's like, holy shit, we still got a quarter and a half yeah, left. Back-to-back -back possessions that they scored yeah, touchdowns. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, we're in the great game now. Here we go. It's in the stars. But we lost. Uh, big shout out to Fando for an incredible same game parlay holiday. We're back in four minutes. This is the Pat McAfee Show. So Tom Brady, earlier in the season, did the same game parlay, took two kneel downs at the end of the fucking game, and lost us a plus like 700 parlay or something. 40,000 people were on. Okay? Then Michael Pittman Jr. got tripped up by his shoestrings. He was wide open. I was there. It was against the Jets on Thursday night. I was there. I seen it. Gets tri tripped up. Doesn't hit his over. And here we are on the same game parlay holiday. <laughs> Now I know. <laughs> scoot, scoot, Scotty Miller. It was a bad spot by the ref. Only gets eight yards when we need eight and a half. But on the NFL site, it says one catch for nine yards. And on the ESPN <laughs> site, it says one catch for nine yards. Because they saw the same thing me and Val saw. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. That's what yeah. <laughs> hey, this was supposed to be a celebratory beer. Tell them. But instead, we got to drink away our sorrows, I guess. Even though two sites have them at nine yards. So do we win? Maybe this is a celebratory. Right now, I feel a bit conflicted all of a sudden. Val's not happy. Chuck's not happy. Todd Bowles is happy. They win. They cover by two and a half. Mike Evans gets a touchdown. Gronk gets a touchdown. But of course... That's tough, dude. That's we were supposed to hit him for ten milli. A milli, 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 a milli. Fuck, dude. Hey, after death, what happens, Bill? What happens after death? I don't know. Um, I have no idea. But I know there's nothing that's mad at me. That's good. It's just so stupid. Because he created everything. Or she. She Well, definitely a she, because God doesn't take responsibility for his own actions. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what? You set me <laughs> You set me up. <laughs> no, I just I don't understand. Like, yeah. If you just watch nature videos, you can't believe in a God that cares. Okay. You know what I mean? I watched this one one time, this fucking baboon or a little monkey... There was a baby gazelle, and they go after him if they can get him. And they fucking, he got it away from the mother, and the mother can't get rid of the thing. And he just fucking just ripped the thing and just started eating the thing alive as it was screaming in agony. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is, you made something that did that? Or like rabbits? Like their whole fucking purpose is just to be eaten. They have no fucking defense, just fucking hopping around. <laughs> just complete jerk-offs, right? Just, and then they just like... The, their only survival is that we fuck so much. Well, we can, we can stay out in front. Like, they're literally designed to keep everybody else alive by being eaten alive. So you think there's some flaws potentially in the entire... No, I just think that, like, I think if there's a god, right, and he made all of this shit, or she, right? Or they, <laughs> or the deep state, man. <laughs> I, I just think that, like, you know, he did what he did here. And he just moved on. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on Overreaction Monday, January 17th. Happy 
Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, if you didn't hear it earlier in my big long rant about the same game parlay holiday ending up fruitless for us we hope you won mm -hmm. and got your bonuses back after opting in FanDuel is refunding everybody that rode alongside uh myself foxy dirty and aj hawk that'll probably take a day or two but thank you, thank Fan you Fan 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 nailed it right on yeah. time there uh, let's get some phone calls shall we mm. we got aj hawk joining us here in a bit what are we not niners getting hot ah uh, we kind of talked about it, i guess no, we did. I don't know if we went all into the Niners getting hot. That, it was more so the Cowboys kind of joking. Yeah, Balling. yeah, we didn't do any of the Niners like Debo. Hey, what if they're a team? Yeah, yeah. What if the Niners are a team? Put the graphic up from that entire game. Robbie Gold hit three, uh, obviously two from fifty plus. I saw Phil stumping for Robbie Gold to become the Nickelodeon yeah. valuable player, yeah. the MVP there. Jimmy Garoppolo has 25 attempts, one of them being an interception, 172 yards, no tuds. Debo Samuel, 72 rush yards and a touchdown, three receptions, 38 yards. Him and Cordero Patterson, right, this mm -hmm, year? Mm -hmm. Kind of playing multi-positions, yeah, right. I guess. It is kind of Taysom Hill, but just heightened up a little bit more. I'm not sure they're playing any of the uh, – defensive or special teams positions that Taysom Hill is playing. I wonder how uh, how much more we see of that going forward. Hey, we got a specimen here. Yeah. This dude can catch. He can run. He knows everybody's position on the field because you got to be able to know mm -hmm. every single play as well whenever you're doing all those positions. I'll be excited to see if there's more of that or if these guys are just, you know, few and far between. They have the body types to do it, too. Yeah. Like that, like Debo is just built like a brick shit house. Yeah. Debo. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you have a guy with that body type and, and is great with the ball in his hands, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what if what if that's on the list of names for if I'm ever lucky enough to have a kid? Debo McAfee. Debo? Hey, look at this little Debo McAfee. He's a brick shit ass. Mm -hmm. This guy will fuck you up. Feed, big body. Just feed him tremblone sandwiches his entire life? Well, Jeez. no, when he's a kid, he can't Dude, do that. Come on. I don't know. Tommy. Gumpy, Gumpy, you can't be feeding kids tremblone sandwiches, right? <laughs> No, not at all. Yeah, it's yeah. not. That ain't right. That yeah. ain't right, my there friend. There was that Hercules kid that was basically on that sandwich regimen. No, yeah. we don't know if that's the case. That kid was putting in more work. You yeah. just That's oh, quite an accusation. I was going to say, I was just going to say, Cremblone sandwiches. See? Maybe like salami and turkey sandwiches and uh, ham. Sure. Oh, and work ethic. Yeah, what? well, that too. Glad. I can't wait for my kid. Hey, did you make a thousand shots today? No, all right. We're fucking sleeping outside. Seat. Yep. Yeah, there's a tent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you make your kid tough? That is interesting. In the world of which... That's what you do, I think. Yeah, we'll get to it. Just if your I, name's Debo, though, there's lots nah, of yeah, to. Born with it. When they fall, you and have like to be. Start yeah. crying. Just say that's fucking life, kid. What? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, keep crying. Mm -hmm. It ain't ending soon. Make him like. Maybe I call him. Maybe call him two two dollar steak. You know, yeah, maybe okay. he's a little two buck steak. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, maybe, I mean, that is steak. a lot to live up to. That yeah. it's like, well, this has got to be the toughest kid on the face of the earth. This dude has to be super tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Debo is another name. True. You have to be. Mm -hmm. And by the way, he is. He's unbelievable for them. He gets the rock all the time. Elijah Mitchell had 27 carries. Yeah. That's a lot of the rock. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's Kyle Shanahan saying, we're going to control this clock. We're going to control this game. We got Juszczyk who can move bodies. Kittle moves bodies. Our offensive line, Williams, back and do their thing. It's old school football over there for San Francisco. And Jimmy G might be on another run to the Super Bowl. And nobody has a clue what the future looks like. They there. don't even use Kittle as a pass catcher anymore. He is literally just a six offensive lineman who can just move bodies. Yeah. But when they, it'll be some play action where he'll sneak yeah. out and everybody like will forget. 80 yard touchdown. Right? Out of nowhere. Could have happened yesterday. There was some pressure in Jimmy's face. Yeah, he's wide, wide open. open. Oh, was that a lot of. Was yeah, that a part of Niners that? check, Debo check, and then it was, it was George right there. George Kittle. That was your same game parlay? We originally had the Zeke under, but Fandle didn't. So I will say that we did push for potential alternate receiving yards for Scotty. Five? Yeah, five oh. plus. <laughs> Come I on. saw some other people were tweeting me, oh, I took it to five plus, eight and a half seemed like too much. It's like, okay, you're betting on an offshore account that's not regulated. I don't even know if you're allowed to fucking do that at <laughs> such a low level, dude. All right? Get out of here. I saw some people say, other books had them at a different yardage or whatever. It's like, well, how about when we put it in? It was like a day ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, things have to happen here. It's just get 
a better spot out of these refs, and we're not even having this conversation right now. I mean, you mentioned it. When Tom was still out there and they had a couple of those, like, third and twos where you knew that they were going to, you know, just like they're just trying to pick up first downs and end this game. I was like, Scott, he's going to catch one or two. He needs a two-yard reception. Have him run a little quick out, a little slant. But, in, but instead, it was the end around. Yeah. yeah. Where Tell you it, what. He could have backed up and stole a. Or Scotty, maybe yeah. instead of taking it, cuts ahead of Tom and is like, no, I'd rather catch it yeah. as a push pass. Yeah. Because you know? it was pretty good timing. Mm-hmm. But I think Scotty's quick enough to maybe get in between yeah, Tom and the center. Absolutely. Right. In the center and do that. Mm-hmm. There's muck or chip in that ball. Nine yards. Yeah. When are we going to, you know, adapt that whole thing? Because the refs. Big conversation piece all week. Can't have it. Yeah. The guys stink every week. So but we'll talk about this in an hour or two. We'll dive into it a little bit more. The NFL came out and said, hey, Boger ain't refing any more, uh, <laughs> yeah. any more NFL games this season. Yeah. And everybody was like, how about just before this season? Mm-hmm. He ain't refing ever again. We have this issue, and it seems to be happening with a lot of the older refs. And I assume it happens with older players where, you know, their, their A game ain't the same anymore. Nope. Okay, their A game's much different. And this guy has sacrificed a lot of his life to the NFL, a lot of Sundays traveling, a lot of heat. We appreciate what Boger has done for the NFL. But what a fucking embarrassment this week. Yeah. Yeah. And he's yeah. not the only one. Uh-uh. There, there is many, many other refs out there that need to hang up the old fucking cowboy hat and get the hell out of the league. But ain't nobody want to be a ref. So what's the next generation look like? Here we are at the beginning of the conversation saying, oh, these refs stink probably forever. Hour two begins. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Is that what I'm supposed to do? To do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hey, how, how do you do there, eh? <laughs> Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show Overreaction Monday, January 17th, 2022. Hour two begins right now. Yeah! Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day to you. I hope you, you as well. find some time today to find somebody that maybe isn't the exact same as you and say, hello, how you doing? Let's live in this uh, society together. Speaking of this society, this society is currently one that is on the other side of the same game. Holiday. Holiday. It was announced in hour one at the end of an entire rant that FanDuel will be refunding all 69,261 bettors I that rode it. alongside myself, Evan Fox, Dirty, and the man that's about to join us. Not because it was a bad beat, but because the spirit of the holiday warrants a little bit of a, of a give back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. None of our parlays hit. No. So. Nope. Ours was actually a half a yard off. And they said this is, once again, not a bad beat refund because we do not want to disrespect you guys for thinking that that's a bad beat because that's gambling. That's, that's going to happen. Baby. That's actually a compliment to John Sheeran, the bookmaker, who had it at eight and a half and okayed it at eight and a half yards and it ended up being eight. And you got to think to yourself, are these motherfuckers time travelers? How do they know? Might be. It's a fair question. But they said in the spirit of the holiday, the same game parlay holiday, since none of them hit, we'll at least refund. And we appreciate everybody riding alongside of us. Joining us now is the fourth member of the team. Whoa. What the the hell was that? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. AJ. AJ. What's going on, dude? What's up? Oh, oh my no. God, AJ. You're on your Am Mac. Muted? You're on your MacBook microphone. Zito said, "For somebody that takes a lot of pride Jesus. and angst in poor audio." I mean, I'm not, but yeah. Oh, okay, uh, it's yeah. Okay. okay. You it's sound fault. terrible. You're oh climb. my God, dude, you're underwater right now, dude. Good, reconnect with me. Jesus. This guy. Some people. Oh, just stumbled out of the gates just like Scotty did it at about seven years. <laughs> yeah. Still boozed up from the weekend? I don't, you know, I don't know how much booze in old AJ does anymore, but I wonder if there is a little bit of a hangover, you know, because yeah. it was a big time weekend for all of us. Football just straight through from Saturday afternoon all the way to this morning, and then obviously we have a game tonight. That was a lot of football. Oh, oh awesome. yeah. 
I loved it. Yeah. You can't beat it. I was on my couch, parked. All day. I did nap. Couple games I passed out during. It's gonna happen. And that I guess awesome. that's gonna happen wild card weekend. And there's more blowouts, I think, than any of us could have expected. We thought maybe one through the weekend would happen. Instead, there was a couple. And I'm not 100 percent sure if that is, you know, the norm. Like maybe we misremember how last year's went or the year before that. And hopefully it's not the way it goes going forward. But 26-19, great game. Yeah, good game. Great and game. Bill's blowing out the Patriots 47-17, maybe passed out a little bit during that game, but I think everybody enjoyed the fact that the Patriots. Wow. just got the doors blown off them <laughs> on national television by a team that is electrifying to watch with a fan base that is electrifying to watch and a team that has built those possibly making appearances during the wins. It was a beautiful blowout there on Saturday. Keep grass right. to the Bills. Grass to the Bills. No. Was not. Yenza Powerade, Adidas, Phil Mickelson, number two. No, I'll say the Bills on the Super Bowl. And then we'll talk about it. No, we're not talking about that. I'm not talking AFC about AFC East, yes. It is definitely goes through Buffalo in the foreseeable future. Thank you. But who gives a shit if they don't win the Super Bowl? I know, and there was a lot of conversation. Like, would you rather just not make the playoffs than lose by 30 in the playoffs? The answer is no, but I did put that tweet out just to start a pause. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you got to do it. Sure. You start the <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of people are tweeting me, hey, Pat, hey, from New England, a lot of mass holes, uh -huh. which, by the way, shout out to all of you. I feel like you're a pretty similar group of people to Pittsburgh people, so you can take this. Yin's fucking stink, dude. Mm -hmm. Lost by 30. Don't be tweeting me about what time our game is okay it's the same time as yours next weekend fuck boy how about that yins are out uh, we never even got a chance to dance yeah. don't start now you sound like joe thomas just sour grapes <laughs> online You're just crying about it yeah you'd much rather get in the playoffs because that game could have won a different way a couple different times there micah hyde doesn't have that home run steal. Yeah. oh yeah i mean that ball could easily sip through his seven, hands seven what happens games. there i mean there's there's a lot of ways things can go, and you always want to get to the dance, not just you know staring at the dance floor from outside, especially when you lose the clown time. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. But a lot of mass holes are coming after me at that. Whatever the case, you guys are Powerade in the AFC East, dude. Yeah. It's uh, fucking recognized. We'll see. It's that bad taste in Powerade, too. You remember when Powerade had, like, fizz in it there for a oh, little bit? Oh, yeah. Carbonation. Yeah, that no, was... Oh, we're like the... It didn't Tiger no, have Powerade? Uh, no. No, that no, was no. all sport. No, it, Tiger was Gatorade. Yeah, yeah. Gatorade. Yeah, he's always... Phil, Phil, they need to bring back Tiger. Phil Mickelson. Power. Hey, Phil's yeah. cool. We agree. Very Phil's cool. A great guy. We, hey, hey we, we agree completely. Phil Mickelson, any other era, greatest golfer of all time, probably. Yeah. A lot of winners, a lot of everything like that. He was in Tiger's era. The problem with the uh, Patriots is you're now in the Josh Allen Bills era. That's well, correct. you know, Mac was a rookie. Josh Allen as a rookie wasn't as good. Let's see what happens. Maybe Mac levels mm -hmm. up. Maybe we go get Calvin Ridley, do something else. To your point. When Josh Allen had that first QB, like you know, power, and he got up to full speed and gained like 19 yards, I was like, "Oh, they're gonna beat the fuck out of the Patriots." Well, how about him just delaying, 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 and throwing a lollipop yeah. to the back, yeah. and it being a touchdown as opposed to being a throwaway mm -hmm. or oh, that's a little bit of a miss. He just drops it in there. They're saying it's windy, it's cold, no problem at all. Just enjoying. You listen to Stephon Diggs talk about Josh Allen. Stephon Diggs came on this show and said whenever he drops the ball he feels bad because his quarterback is doing absolutely everything he can to get us a win and I drop a ball that's on me you listen to Jordan Poyer safety who stinks at football obviously uh -huh, terrible didn't make the uh, Pro Bowl mm -hmm. number one defense in points and yards allowed no Pro Bowlers unbelievable mm. awesome the system is accurate in how we award and reward mm -hmm. people for greatness but Jordan Poyer said it's been an honor to watch Josh Allen become a better player yeah. and become good he actually said I think I can't wait to watch Josh Allen play it feels like everybody in Buffalo knows and in Canada those who weren't able to make it to right. the game that Josh Allen's a guy and I think Josh Allen knows he's a guy too I don't know if they were celebrating as hard after that game uh, as they would have been maybe years ago for beating the Patriots in the playoffs. I like the fact in that photo that I took of McDermott with his, mm -hmm, his mm -hmm. uh, beanie on, his jacket on, and it just said whatever, 47-10 or whatever the case was. That team expects to win. And if you remember after the last time they lost to the Patriots, which was at home in the middle of a windstorm, hey, let's not give Bill, please, McDermott said. Let's fucking... Let's relax with the complimenting of yeah. Bill, which people can bring up. He's a great coach, obviously. They should be very proud of the program that they built up yes. there. And that was a hell of a performance on Saturday. Night. Yeah, it really wasn't close. Like, even though they won by 30, it felt like they were winning the entire game by 50 points. Like, there was no hope whatsoever after that Micah Hyde pick. And uh, whenever you go around and think to yourself that, 
The Bills now got the Chiefs. Yeah. And the Titans now got the Bengals. Woo! And Cincinnati got a chance to celebrate a playoff victory for the first time in 31 years. Woo! Let's have a goddamn divisional round here next weekend. No games on Monday night next weekend. No three games on Sunday. It's just two on Saturday. Two on Sunday. Who will the Buccaneers be playing? We find out tonight. Rams and Cards take on each other in a Monday night football matchup to see who's going to travel to Tampa Bay and take on Tommy B. J.J. Watts all the way back. He put together a hell of a hype video yeah. this oh, morning. Yeah. Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury. Now we get a chance to see how they perform whenever it's super wild card weekend and a lot is on the line. Will Matthew Stafford be able to bounce out of his I'm throwing picks every game hole and slump that he is in? What will the stadium sound like after the Rams fans were called out by Kelly Stafford, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey on prime time. I can't wait to see tonight. What do you think? It's close. I think it's close one tonight. Yeah, I I think think so. This might be the best game of the weekend. I agree. Yeah, we were just talking about this. The division games, aside from, you know, the goddamn Patriots, typically turn out to be pretty damn close. And this is it for Stafford, right? He's he's got to go out there. No, and, no, no. First year in the offense. Of First, First year yeah. in the offense. Oh, no. We're talking about break. MVP Stafford before the season. Pressure. Well, and no, they'll get killed that. all off season if they get yeah. beaten oh. first. I mean, they went all in to win the Super Bowl. The team put out that tweet, you know, about going all in. See you at at SoFi or whatever. Mm-hmm. If they get beaten the first round by a team in the division. Not a good look. Nope. Yeah, but, you know, McVay's a good talker. He is. He is. He's very good. McVay, we, we had a great start. We had a good thing. We got a lot more things we can add. And as the season went on, we continued to find more chemistry, more gel. We used to be able to get together. And Matthew Stafford and I found out what we liked, what we didn't like, the moments that we didn't appreciate. How are we going to How are we going to go forward and be better next year? That is what I'm going to do flying coach with Schrager a little bit. We'll get a chance to chat with other football players, other football coaches, maybe get more information from these football folks about how we can be better next year. But this first year in the system is what we expected. We still got everybody locked down. Still got everybody locked down. We're still feeling good. I'm growing as a play caller. We're growing as an organization. That's what McVay will say all offseason. Everybody be like, yeah, that's 100%. That's the truth. Now, on the other side, Arizona, what happens if they just lay an absolute egg out there? Mm, yeah. uh, and, but on the flip side, Arizona can come out tonight absolute buzz. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't have hop, which is a problem. The offense has been very different since they lost him. But Kyler Murray. He's 8-0 in Texas. That's right. That's right. Through high school. It's because, you know, he enjoys the big moments. He enjoys the bright lights. Top 10 pick in baseball. Number one pick in football. He is a superstar in big-time players, make big-time plays in big-time moments. And now it's our chance to see what Kyler will do and what his legacy will be said during his playoff career. And tonight, that's I'm excited for tonight. So am I. I just got pumped up thinking about it. And you mentioned it, too. The Cardinals' defense, like if Stafford is kind of – they have guys, Buda Baker, we'll see what J.J. does, Isaiah Simmons. Like they have guys who, you know, will be hunting. Big time. Chandler. Put that graphic back yeah, up Chandler that Dirty Jones. put together about tonight. I mean, Chandler Jones not being on this graphic is going to piss off Chandler, obviously. <laughs> right. And Dirty said, hey, listen. <laughs> hey, hey, Jay, He's all the way back. He released a video this morning with what song? California, California Dreaming. California Dreaming. <laughs> Is that James Bond? What is that? Well, uh, it's that the, that one is a remake, but it's just yeah. you know, a famous mm-hmm. old song. I thought it was like one of those songs about James Bond. You know, there's always those bangers yeah. that are Could slow. Be. You might have known they did use it uh, for San Andreas, the movie where The Rock is a helicopter yeah. pilot uh, with the big okay. earthquake. It was in that trailer. He, he actually caught a helicopter. In he that d- one. He d- well, well uh, I think that Shaw. yeah, that was Hobbs and Shaw. Were holding on. They're no, going on no, the edge he of threw a submarine in that one. He did that as well. Yes. That was in Hobbs and Shaw. That was in a Fast and the Furious. In yeah. Hobbs and Shaw, the helicopter is going off the edge. And he, pulls, he pulls it back yeah. with the That's know, chain link. Yes. Yeah. He, he had, actually did that too. Real stunt. I don't think he'd do it anymore. He had a cheat meal last night. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I think whenever he was catching helicopters and throwing submarines and all that stuff, I think he wasn't having any cheat meals. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, right. whole, mess, whole mess of sushi or pancakes? Chocolate chip cookie sushi. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. I seen it last night. It was just the top that Tequila? he was watching. Wow. Uh, there's definitely some Terramana. Okay. Wow. He's going to get $10 billion for Terramana. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of money. Yep. Except he is on that Mickey Mouse show tonight, so who knows? He might end up uh, crashing. No, that. no, no. He'll crush it tonight. He'll crush it tonight. Oh, yeah. Shout out to ESPN and Omaha Productions. I honestly, when I saw the graphic for the entire 
year that was that ESPN yeah. tweeted out. I thought I was the only person they left off the graphic. <laughs> I honestly thought that. I guess there was a few others that were left off there. So fuck them, honestly. Uh -huh. sure. But that would have been a sweet graphic to have. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, oh, yeah. I would have like, loved that graphic. I think that's why I was so like, oh, fuck off, dude. How come I can't, I can't get a spot on the goddamn graphic, dude? What's this about? What's this all about? I feel like we promoted it pretty well all year. Yeah. We did. Got a chance to go on there, have a good time. Yeah, interesting enough, the people not on there that, uh, aside from you, aren't actually on the internet. So they would probably never oh. even see it. Oh. So it was an interesting decision by them. Well, whoever decided, obviously, has an axe to grind that did the drawing, whatever. Sure. Fuck oh. off. You stink. You're actually, <laughs> you're really good at what you do, actually. That, that was an incredible graphic. Well, it was, good. It was a good. That graphic. was an incredible, incredible graphic promoting tonight. But yeah, yeah, The Rock's on tonight. I believe there's a couple others as well. I don't know how it's going to go. I might be watching the main cast, you know, just because yeah. tonight's game. And this is going to sound bad as a uh, as a gambler, you know? Sure. I mean, it was a plus 1,000, same game parlay that we did not hit, but I got to hit some bets tonight. I have to. Just like for my own. Juju. Know, like for my own. Because I felt like I had a pretty good handle on a lot of the games. Yeah. You and I, I, I won a couple straight up bets. I won a couple straight up yeah. bets. The super boost hit on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of people are coming after me for stealing money from my my viewers, my watchers, and everything like that for FanDuel because we somehow missed a plus thousand same game parlay by a half a goddamn yard, which we didn't actually miss because the ref mm -hmm. misspotted it. But a lot of people are coming after me. I'm like, less than 12 hours ago, we just hit him for a super boost mm -hmm. with the Bills. So, I mean, I, I, it's... I feel like I have a pretty good handle on things right now, gambling-wise, but my account in the lower right corner telling me how much is left isn't agreeing with me. Yeah. So tonight I'm going to be watching with, how do you think tonight goes? I, I honestly don't know. I, I, I kind of like the Cardinals just because the puppies have kind of been, yeah, exactly, like all weekend, but eh, I, I really don't know. Can you put the game spread back up and everything like that? And A.J. Hawk maybe will join us. I heard Zito yelling back here. I don't know. Him and A.J. not understanding each mm -hmm. other. Nick just shook his head. Zito just shook his head. Yeah. Uh, something bad's going on behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, his, his microphone is going down. Oh, oh no. A.J. Oh. Come on. Never would have guessed. It should be fixed the next like, couple minutes. Is he getting a new one? He just Amazon that thing right <laughs> to the house? Yeah. That's no, it's good. a uh, USB plug-in problems I, be I believe we're dealing with right now. But. Just real quick, Zito, thank you for figuring out something over there in uh, Columbus, Ohio, yep. from sitting here. And Nick looks a bit distraught, too. I think they try, they try to give it their best effort or whatever. And, you know, this is why the shows have test calls before the show starts. Wow. But if you have a test call before the show starts, you miss that first reaction of, oh, your shit doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We need the, oh, your shit doesn't work moments because AJ gets... So mad. So oh, that's livid. So, so mad. mad. Mm -hmm. AJ is a guy who, what, just throws in super toxic stuff in a conversation, mm -hmm. yeah. seems yep. to be relaxing, having a good time. If you say to him, hey, you sound, your shit sounded bad, he gets oh, yeah. so mad. He will invest so much money overnight oh, yeah. just so that doesn't happen again. At the beginning of the quarantine, when the world stopped, uh, we kept doing our show because we're an internet show and we have a big enough space that we were able to do it socially distant wise. We were actually checked and everything on whether or not we could continue to go. We passed. If this studio was set up in New York or LA, it would cost $100 million. Yeah, was... But we're able to do it in Indianapolis. So we were able to continue to go while other shows had to stop because of whatever rules or protocols they had while they adjust to it. They didn't have a clue audio wise. Whenever they were at home, they had to catch up to the internet. AJ was so mad at everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you see? Do you see on ESPN this morning? They sounded like they were underwater for three hours. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, I didn't really notice that. I saw like they were just getting through it to have a show or whatever. He's like, they sounded terrible. Like, it, can't have it or whatever. And then he'll come on a show, and you know, when his internet goes out, and we all mock him, that's because he gets so mad, yeah. so so mad about that type of thing. He doesn't want to be the reason why the quality of this show drops at all. And we'd all like to let him know right now, it is never his fault. It is all 100% our fault and my fault. Why the show might stink? Oh, hey, no. Jay, it's okay, dude. Don't worry about, don't worry about the. Audience. Audio sounding like shit, AJ. We, we, we know that you care and you try. It's not your fault, AJ. It's not AJ Hawk's fault, dude. Yeah, but he lives in a 60,000 square foot house, Pat. You'd think he would have a microphone that might work every now and then. I don't want to judge anybody's Wi-Fi at their house. 
because it took me 15 minutes to upload a two minute video last night after the loss of that game. Fair. Well, and that's fair. And like you said, in terms of the audio quality, he will spare no expense and spend as much money as he needs to. But let's keep in mind, he's still using an iMac from, you yeah. know, 1999. Yeah. Cheapskate won't buy a new computer. I yeah. don't understand it. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a chance to chat with him here at some point because there's a lot to unfold and unwrap from the weekend that was, especially the game that is coming tonight. Darius Butler will join us in the next hour. I can't wait to chat with D-Butt, get his thoughts. I assume he's going to have some things to say about the time management down there in Dallas yeah. with Big Mike McCarthy. And also, these refs. I mean. I mean, there is going to be – former players talk about refs more than anybody else because we uh, – and by we, I'm putting myself in a former player's category when I shouldn't. I understand I just got a chance to be there. And I've been fucked over by a ref, so I guess I can no, you can, do it, yeah. I can, I yeah, can speak as that's the case. Refs are such a massive piece of the game. And it just kind of gets overlooked by, I think, a lot of commentators. Now, Troy Aikman will let it eat every once in a yeah. while. And I think Collinsworth will even let some out. It depends on who you are, whether or not you can talk it, because the refs are literally a representative of the league. They're a representative of the game. Whenever they're on a solo shot, ISO shot, to 20-some, 25, 30 million people, they are representing the sport and the game when they're speaking. Hey, this is, you can't do this. All right, so we're going to back them up 10 yards. We're going to do this again. They are a representative of the sport. It feels like they're getting worse somehow as technology is getting better. And the fact that everybody at home can see them get things wrong and they're not allowed to for whatever reason. For instance, the Joey Burrow erroneous whistle call mm. that was clearly a touchdown. Mm -hmm. If the whistle isn't blown, still a touchdown. Whistle did not affect anything in the game, I do not believe. They said everybody stopped. Well... I mean, the dude already caught the touchdown. It was, mm -hmm. you know, one of those situations. But then Walt Anderson comes out and goes, on the field, they discussed that the whistle came after the catch. And everybody's like, hey, Walt, this ain't fucking 1530, dude. Yeah. We all got eyes and ears, and we got 35 different camera angles and cell phones that are have sound and and can watch. Yeah. So they ran it back 10 times. Let's run this back in uh, full speed here. And then clearly, Joe almost steps out of bounds. Incredible play by him. Good awareness, just like Josh Allen had later. A little scroll or, or roll right, kind of expand, extend a play. He throws it. Whistle clearly blows. Then he catches a touchdown. Yep. I think we all got to the point where it was just like, ah, they would have scored that touchdown yeah, anyway. Touch yeah. It was a hell of a play. If they were blowing him out of bounds, he wasn't out of bounds. He was actually inbound, so it was a ref fuck up. But then whenever they come out and compound the problem and say, well, the whistle was clearly after the ball was already caught, so we didn't think it affected anything. Like, you fucking idiots. That is not... That is not the case at all. Why is that even being released? Because now you have to call into question their intelligence, their awareness. And when they were having that conversation on the side, the ref that had the erroneous whistle, which we all assume it was because he thought that Joe okay. Burrow stepped out of bounds. Yeah. That was not the case. It was actually just an erroneous whistle. And then they get into the huddle group and he goes, I blew the whistle, but it wasn't after until I saw him catching. And they're like, okay, cool. That's Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Then we'll just move on. Now you're going to call into question the entire system. Yeah. And how do we not... How do we have the uh, replay assist happen sometimes, uh -huh. but not all the time? Are we trying to slow roll it? Well, how come we're slow rolling this thing that benefits the game immensely in some very important games, but not in other very important games? This shit got to get figured out. And I know that the old school thought is, you know, more replay will slow down the game. Replay assist is the answer. Let's just get some people that understand what they're doing, are quick, have the ability to maybe bounce through these replays in a much faster, efficient fashion, maybe people that are a little bit younger that are used to seeing things and zooming in on things and moving things as opposed to like 90 year olds that are doing it and let's make the game better for everybody more efficient for everybody so that these refs when they fuck up they can get it right and not get shit thrown at them as they're jogging off the field the ref position is a very difficult one it's not easy at all and nobody wants to be refs. Who would want to be a ref? I've never met somebody that said, hey, I want to be a ref. It is a no-win position. Nobody's showing up to cheer for you. But if you allow them a safety net of logical technology, I think we'd be able to all move forward in a much better fashion. Hopefully the replay assist is just an alley-oop or a setup for this offseason for it to be much better. But the process, the transparency, the conversation, all just has to be picked up and revolutionized for 2022 with the tech that we have. And it is not. And I got people telling me, tweeting me go ahead and put up chef uh chef chef something this guy Con. 
Pat, why is it that the NFLPA has never protested about this? What's the point of complaining when actions do speak louder than words? If you're not going to push for a change, mm. then shush. Don't you ever fucking shush me, chef! <laughs> That's a valid point, though, from this chef. How come the NFLPA never says, like, hey, if we don't get the refs fixed, we need to figure out some more stuff? That's because the NFLPA, whenever they're negotiating with the NFL, it's always about business, business, business. But everybody's business would be much better if the NFL refs had this thing figured out. I think they just signed a long-term deal with the refs, I think just like a few weeks ago, which is a fascinating thing. What does that mean? But I think using this platform to say, hey, I feel for the refs. I understand that the ref position is not an easy one. Nobody wants to be a ref, but also me bringing it to light, I think is trying to enact a little bit of change so we can make this thing better for all of us that want to watch the game and get shit right while we're gambling on them. Yeah, I mean, what else, what are, what are you supposed to do? Go fucking knock on the door, you know, at NFL's headquarters. You mentioned it earlier too. I think a big part of this is with Jerome Boger, like these guys who we know who have been refs for a long time, they're the ones that are making all the mistakes. Like you, some of these crews were like, I saw yesterday, like a, a guy was the, it was his fourth year as an NFL ref. It's like, oh, this guy's actually been pretty good today. And I don't know if that's just because he doesn't have any hubris. He doesn't have an ego after being a ref for a long time. He's kind of still earning his stripes, if you will. It seems like these guys who we know their names, they're, and the, like the older guard, they're the ones who mm -hmm. fucking stink. So it's kind of like, a, and we laid it out earlier in the season. You said until they do something where these refs are full-time employees of the NFL, they're not lawyers or dentists who have their own you know, big-time practices who are just kind of doing this because they enjoy getting out there. Until that happens, there's no reason to think that anything's going to get any better. Enjoy getting out there and also enjoy being yeah, the, yeah, the, the, uh, in, their, in their minds kind of the star of the show. Well, think about it. I mean, what's old buddy Carenti, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He might take his yeah. pooper out. Yeah. Stick his pooper out and yep. then says, ISO, please zoom in on me. Hi, I am Correnti. I am representing the National Football League. And what that piece of shit just did after the biggest play of his life against a team that cut him and told him he was not good enough is unacceptable in my eyes and the NFL's eyes. That's why you saw me. I promptly went right to my flag. I gave him a, hey, not around here. And then I threw it. 15-yard penalty, fuck off. <laughs> that is what these old heads do, though. Oh, yeah. Because they've had to build up a callus of confidence, mm -hmm. because people have bashed them so hard, they kind of get a god complex, which I guess you have to have as a ref because it is your world. But, man, it would be much better, I think, for everybody if they were allowed to have somebody drop in and say, ah, you're actually wrong, just move on. And that's what the replay assist is. I don't know why we don't do it more. And are the older guys just more likely to resent that type of thing because my call stands? I think that's part of it. And then, like you mentioned, too, with Walt Anderson, if he's the one who's running everything, like he was a ref for a long time, a lot of these guys probably refed with him, and it's kind of like that old boys club mentality. Like I don't think he's going to be coming out here and going against against what these guys are calling on the field. Like, he's he's going to have their back because he was in that same position with a lot of these guys for however many years. Foxy, who did I get into it with about replay? Somebody. I forget Ooh. who it was. Somebody. I was talking to uh, – it was an older – Older generation, we'll, we'll get to a break here, and we'll be back in about four minutes. Kay Adams is joining us. Yeah. Let's go. Good morning, football. Here we go. Okay. Emmy nominate. Also, yeah, there's yeah. the people. I think she got every prediction of the Super Wild Card weekend right. Nobody yeah. else did. Let's go, Kay. She, she is on NFL Network's uh, kickoff coverage on Sunday. She's on NFL Network every morning. She'll be joining us after this break. Um, ah, I forget what I was going to say. So you got to argue with someone. With someone. Oh, yeah, the th where they said, like, Having pass interference be replayed was uh, an abysmal failure or whatever. I was like, no, 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 no. The execution yeah. was a failure. It was Kostro. What's that? It was Keith Kostro on the, the show day. last week. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was like, no, no, no. The idea. Let's not bury the idea because the execution was terrible. Like those 45-yard penalties should be able to be reviewed. Yeah. And if it takes you a while to review it, keep the field, keep the ruling on the field. But somebody has to be able to make that decision quickly and expeditedly and, w and blow it in there so we get the right calls at the right times and not too much long uh longer afterwards What's shocking up? part about the games yesterday i think i saw a stat there was no uh, defensive pass interference called yesterday great news mm. there was a couple holdings some people yeah. are getting a little bit oh, happy yeah. with the holdings oh, we're yeah. back in four minutes with Kay adams hopefully aj hawk darius butler will join us in the next hour this is the pat McAfee show overreaction monday january 17th
to tell you a story. A story about a young man who once had a gambling problem, perhaps, before all these FanDuel sports books. The greatest app, the greatest place to gamble existed. There were bookies, there were illegal gambling rings. And one time, yes, I was a part of one. And I could not pay my bill, per se. I broke my legs. But now, because of FanDuel Sportsbook, they saved my life. That's why I will always gamble with the number one sportsbook in America, FanDuel Sportsbook. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right. Uh, put that capo on. Something? No, I was going to let you lead the way, and then we were going to sing our song that we practiced. What do you guys sing? It's our song, Aaron. Go ahead. Our song? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I was just about to get into it. It's uh, Tuesday. <laughs> They say that Aaron Rodgers is rather great. The son of a bitch lied. Oh. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that's where I thought that's where we're still writing it. I thought we we're gonna. You guys just got no. a chance to kind of dive into a writer's room. Uh, with me and Aaron. The Jacksonville Duval Jaguars are dead, and I think that is something. That is a shame, but we should at least have a moment of silence, I guess, for the Urban Meyer-led Jacksonville Jaguar squad. He chose one time not to fly back home with the team after a loss. He said, I gotta see the grand babies. That's right. <laughs> the only babies he saw were those young ladies at the shop house in the the devil. He had to answer a lot of questions about that, but then he got back on track and started coaching football. Huh? Oh, yeah. Forget about the fingers. And they won. They won a game in London. How'd they win? It's because they forgot about the fingers. That's right. And then they came back to America. Mm. And they lose. Oh. And they lose. Oh. And they lose. Oh. And they lose. Oh. And anonymous sources say, this guy fucking Thanks. Oh. He's laughed out of meeting rooms. Everybody wants to smack him in the mouth. Uh, attitude reflect leadership, Captain. Have a little mirror therapy, pal. A little bit. You stink. You guys ever get yourself one of these? I didn't think so, you loser. <laughs> hey, this one from high school. <laughs> uh, this one from college. Uh, and this one right here, middle fingers open for the NFL. If any of you would stop fucking me over. Goddamn right. That's what we're trying to get. <laughs> Hey, you, defense coordinator. What's that? You got any of these? <laughs> no, I don't. That's I don't. That's why I thought you are a fucking loser. I'm you, sorry. You need to stop by the job. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on Overreaction Monday, January 17th. Joining us now, first time guest. Ooh. Uh, host of Good Morning Football, which is Emmy nominated. Mm -hmm. I assume she has already won an Emmy or on her way to win numerous Emmys. Also host the People, the television show. She's on Sunday mornings on NFL Network. And this past weekend is the only human that got every single game predicted correctly on the network. Ladies Ooh. and gentlemen, Kay Adams. Yeah! <laughs> What an intro. Thanks for having me. Very excited to be here. And yes, five for five. The pressure is on in the NFC West tonight. Uh, what, who'd you pick tonight? I picked the Cardinals, but it was definitely uh, like a manifestation law of attraction choice because the Rams should win. But Stafford picked six. Kyler hopefully plays the best game of his life and they win. 
Okay, so let's talk about it. You work at the NFL. You're one of the faces of the NFL. We talked about that every morning. Good morning, football. Hey, you guys crush it over there. We love it. You guys crush it over there. We love the show. You built up quite a universe for yourself over there, gentlemen. Yeah, well, our universe is much less professional and good as the Good Morning Football (laughs) universe. But we watch every morning. We appreciate the show. We love the show. Uh, But we do have a couple questions. So whenever you're one of the faces of the NFL, do you get inside information? Is that why you want 5-0? and oh? How do you seem to know more than yeah. everybody else? You're at every – she's at every stadium. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's at every stadium. You're everybody's favorite, it seems like. Where is this information coming from, or have you always just been a football whiz? I wouldn't say whiz. I think it's just osmosis. I'm so ingrained in it. It's, I mean, three hours a day, Pat's a long time to be talking about the same stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think I have, I have, I wouldn't say insiders. You know, I hit up Ian yesterday like nine times. Like, what's going on? Is Mike McCarthy playing for his job in the second quarter? Send. And uh, he writes back, no, I think he's safe. So we, you know, we go back and forth. Um, I have great friends in the league. I sort of go by my gut a lot. I'm a big info girl, not next gen stats, but. There, but basically, I mean, hey. as wild as, as this wild card weekend was, it was kind of easy to make the picks, let's be honest. I didn't pick any upsets, so I'm a low-risk oh, person. Yeah, it's all right to go, Chalk, because there's uh, the Niners were the uh, upset. They were, you know, kind of an underdog there, so that's a great pick. But we all, we all thought they were going to win anyways. The fact that they did was kind of alarming actually going in there. You just said in there you hate stats, Kay? Whoa. 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 <laughs> Kay? You can't hate stats. No, I stats. love stats because I can't love fantasy that. football, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not great at math, to be honest. So, I, uh, you can always just use stats to bolster any argument both sides, and I'm definitely good at making an argument based on numbers. Okay, well, I can respect that because stats do play for every team, and hindsight seems to always be the champion. Hindsight's got one of these, but <laughs> let's talk. Uh, let's talk about tonight's game. You said Matthew Stafford not throwing picks. Then you obviously said Kyler playing the best game of his life. You know, yeah. Shregs is best friends. You know, Shregs, good friend of yours, co-host of yours, best friends with McVay. They host a show together. What is the feeling you think out of Los Angeles? If they lose, it's going to be a loud offseason, isn't it? And I think if Arizona loses, it'll be another year of like, is this team ever going to really go? What do you think are the big takeaways from tonight's game? Shrags is super interesting because he's also pretty close with Cliff Kingsbury. So it's almost like that whoa, scene in The Good whoa, Son shrinks. where the mom's on the cliff holding Elijah Wood and Macaulay Culkin's hand. And which one am I going to save? Because I was very curious about who he was going to pick in this one. Uh, and he went Rams. I would say, oh, man, McVay's got the number on Cliff Kingsbury. So there's that right away. They've got the firepower. I think if Stafford has a bad game, the Rams can still win, right? They've got the defensive stars. You can rely on their run game. Cooper Cup's going to, like, crush it as always, Mr. Triple Crown. With the Cardinals side, it's all on Kyler. Like, it's all on his back. And you have James Conner, who has a heel injury that's lingering. And we mm. think he's going to play. I think one of the craziest storylines, what is this, overrated takes Monday? Uh I overrated. Whoa. What is Sorry. this? Okay. She hates that. Get it right. Overrated okay. take. Come on, Jay. Okay. Come on. Come on. Right. Hey. Overreaction Monday. Okay. Overreaction Monday is that James Conner doesn't get enough love, and he's one of the best running backs in the game. 18 touchdowns in 15 games is absolutely crazy. He's been the only stable force in this entire team, and if he doesn't look good early, like, my eyes are going right to James Conner today. Like, what's he going to look like? And then the old guys, Zach Ertz, A.J. Green, A.J. Green balled out the last time they faced the Rams, so I'm hoping he can do it. I think the Cardinals win because Kyler is going to just put it on his back and make it happen. And I, I can't wait to see Kyler in the big moment. I mean, he seems like a guy who always rises to the occasion last year they were so inconsistent yeah. and this year they had their wins and they lose jj J. J. what who's all the way back and he'll probably have what four or five sacks yeah, tonight. Oh, yeah. Four, four five seven, yeah maybe six, six, seven. six. Yeah. he might catch a touchdown tonight actually yeah, really. he might be playing tight end not 100 percent sure excited for you said you're a fantasy uh person is that how you got into the coverage of the nfl did it was fantasy yeah. the door yeah you guys are on SiriusXM. Uh, I launched the SiriusXM Fantasy Sports channel with Steve Cohen over at SiriusXM Sports back in 2011. I was living in St. Louis, and I had a little ISDN box and a headset, and I would be talking to, uh, fantasy stats and taking calls at all times of the night. I worked from, like, midnight to 6 a.m. in that New York office in Manhattan, so that's how I got my start. Yeah, fantasy sports. Always liked it, always played it. 
competitive as hell and uh, and it kind of worked out it's cool did you go to school for journalism broadcasting or did you kind of just fall into a passion of fantasy football and being smart yeah i went to the i grew up in chicago and then i uh, went to the university of missouri where i started off in the journalism school and quickly was like "Eh, this isn't for me so uh i ended up switching to communications but always knew i wanted to do something in media sports sort of pulled me along which is which is really great and then the NFL Network hears you at 5.30 a.m. hammering it out on Sirius XM <laughs> Fantasy and says, we need you to host Good Morning Football. That's going to be on every single morning in every NFL building. And we're going to expect happiness, upbeat, and creative content every single day. Every single day. I came here uh, by way of NBC Sports, but that's exactly how it happened, Pat. There was a producer over at NBC that produced shows like with Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk. When NBC Sports, remember when it launched as this big thing, it's going to be its own channel. And he listened to the radio show and said, yeah, we should definitely have you come up here. And I would do like news reports about hockey, which I never, I mean, I don't like hockey. I don't subscribe to hockey at all okay. and I would just do you know you just have to say yes and then I'd go and I'd knock on every door of Roto World and say hire me let me do something for you well overrated take Monday uh-huh. and hockey stinks and stats like are I didn't say stinks awesome. I said I don't have time I don't remember my heart for it Oh, I understand. Oh, Me neither. Wait sense. for the playoffs. Yeah, wait yeah, for the yeah. playoffs. The playoffs yeah. are the playoffs are absolutely great. Now you guys are in the middle of like uh, finding a replacement for Nate Burleson, who is working on Nickelodeon, mm-hmm. CBS, and doing real life news. The day he left Good Morning Football, I think the next morning he actually had to say, "Hi, I'm Nate Burleson," and the um, <laughs> the terrorists in Afghanistan are playing bumper cars with American tanks. I will send you now to Jack. In the field in Baghdad yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. That was actually what he was doing. It was like, God damn, that was quite a change overnight for him. Now you guys are searching for the full-time replacement or is it always going to be on the move? It's a good question. Uh, Nate is Debo Samuel. Like he just, he can do it all. I don't know if you got to hear him on the Nickelodeon broadcast yesterday, but I, my nieces, my nephews were all, you know, texting me and, and my, my, my brother and sister. And just He's just so good at so many things, so it doesn't uh, surprise me at all that he's able to make that switch. He's the best co-host in the world, and I miss him every day. Uh, right now, we're rotating. Hey, I think it happened so yeah. quickly See and you. so quick, like fast before the season that we uh, were there looking. I mean, um, my contract is up. In May, so Whoa. I don't know how, you know, we have to work that out and figure it out. Yeah, so the future, it's all super exciting. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's a little bit of a leverage play right there, Kay. Yeah. Hey, no, congrats to you. It's exciting. I don't know. I don't know what the, we, none of us know what the future no. is. No. Hey, this is big deal. Congrats to you, Kay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Free agency is a big deal. Free agency is a big deal, especially whenever you're on the show that every football person watches basically mm-hmm. every single morning and is up for Emmys and awards. Oh, it must get exhausting just being so great at your job. Yeah. The free agency coming, you're going to get broken get that off. Get bag, K. Carpe diem, K. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I've actually go. never said that thing that's breaking news right here. It's all fine. Right? No, I don't know. I'll, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. I obviously love my job. Uh, it is the coolest thing to be to get to talk about football for three hours, as you know. So it's it's a lot of fun. Hey, I have a bone to pick with you. Can I can I do that right now? I mean, your show, dude. Do whatever you got to uh, do. You've ruined interviewing Aaron Rodgers. Do you know that? Well, see, I feel on the other side. <laughs> uh, oh, do you? I, yeah, I feel like it's been good. I feel like it's been good as interviewing because I don't really interview. I just sit there and have a conversation. You know. Correct. So then. I'm told you get to sit down with Aaron Rodgers for, you know, seven to ten minutes. And I go, oh, okay, great. This happened last week. And I sit down and I'm like, what questions do I want to ask him? And it's impossible to even come up with anything to ask him because he just comes on your show. And he has these hour sessions of just stream of consciousness. And there's nothing. There is literally nothing that he has not gone over with you. And so you've ruined the experience of networks interviewing Aaron. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm winning awards. Uh, you know, I would like to thank all the boys here. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Really thank, you Pat. thank you, Pat. You know, uh, I'd like to thank AJ, whose tech doesn't work today. Son of a bitch, oh, go and no. figure out a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> That's stuff for him. Uh, and obviously, we'd like to thank Aaron for taking Tuesdays 50, 55 minutes, uh-huh. 45 minutes. What? You know, after years and years and not talking to anybody about anything because everybody just buried him publicly, basically, coming on the show and burying his soul. Uh, we appreciate that. No, Kay, Kay, 
your angle conversation with him much different than ours. You still bring out gems and greatness, just like on Good Morning Football. You guys get great stuff out of basically every single guest that comes on the show. Aaron Andrews came after us a little bit ago, too. Yeah, when yeah. Aaron came on, she goes, I know you talk to Aaron every day or whatever. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we really throwing a little <laughs> no, bit? No, I love it. Nah. Yeah. Nah. nah. Sure. Nah. I love it, but you've ruined it. Like, uh, you have three questions for Aaron, and you're like, well, Pat asked. I already know the answers to the questions. He's never been an open book, but we, you really let us get to know his character, what he, who he is as a human, his kindness, his vulnerability. Like, it's transcendental. Like, I'm not, I'm not like that seriously. It's awesome, but it's very difficult to come up with new material. Well, you're smart. You, you are incredibly talented and smart enough. You figure it out and do great with that whole thing, even though we do get 45 minutes of his brain kind of spilling <laughs> out there. Let's, let's pivot to that, though, because you guys get to talk to a lot of really cool people, and you host uh, People, which is out in the, uh, that's in the, the celebrity world, right? Yes. Anybody you talk to that you were just blown away by, like anybody come right to your mind, where you, you know that con whether it's the NFL or in the people you talk to, me like, oh, that feels like a real human, as opposed to maybe asshole that I thought it could have potentially went. Yeah, I mean, Aaron Rodgers for sure. That interview will be on Sunday on NFL Network. Hey, we can't we wait to watch. Yeah. 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 Hey, that's gonna be awesome. We'll watch that going into Tuesday. The if there's anything left, perfect. So, the, yeah, a, the reason I took the people job because I'm not that obsessed with the celebrity world, Pat. But on Good Morning Football, when we interview, we each, you know, you ask a question, and you each ask your question, and then it's over. So you know what it's like to have rapport and and do what you do every day. So I wanted to hone in on my interview skills because I really don't get that opportunity to. Uh, so I get to do it every day. Uh, I would say, you know, George Clooney, is, uh, Alicia Keys is probably one of the realest oh. person, people that I've ever met. Uh, but I, you interview everyone. Celebrities are so different because they're so much more open. And anyone in music, actors less than, than musicians, but any musical act is is any artist is a lot more fun to talk to and they're all open and vulnerable and they're pushing something. They know the game. I feel like in the NFL, you know, you go through that media training and it's a different challenge. So it's a little bit refreshing to go to the celebrity side and they're like, I'll tell you about what I did last night. And you're like, Oh, okay. You're a free agent in May. Are you going into the, are you going into the celebrity world? Are you going to stay in sports? Is the NFL and Oh yeah, I want. I mean, I want the big. I want the big jobs. I want the. I, I want to go right to the top of the NFL. Are you kidding? What do we want? You want like. Uh, you want like kickoff show host, or you like commentate? Yeah, I want. I would love a. You know, you've built such a plat. You've changed the game, so there's that option, right? Like you, you, you went and did it yourself. Oh, let's go. Uh, okay, you can't. You're doing I mean, your own not, thing. It's no. It's no secret. The goal is to have the the pedigree to have the the. the big boy seat at the table sure absolutely on those those big platforms those meaningful games i love visiting stadiums i love it i'm energized by it juiced every time i go i think i get to go to tampa this weekend so i'm excited but i just like i like being part of the game day experience as much as i love and i also love being obviously being on in the morning we get to set the tone for the day set the agenda the fact that you even turn us on and, and try to see what we're saying we try to guess what's going to be the topic of the day we're the first ones that get a crack at it it's a big deal so you want to be <laughs> what is that sunday night football I well, who was yeah, on the field commissioner yeah. maybe, 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 maybe commissioner of, of the nfl, NFL. Yeah. <laughs> what is the dream job? Yeah, we're trying to figure it out because you, you want to have one of the mainstays. One Monday Night Football is live at the at whatever stadium it is, right? Yep. Sunday Night yeah. Football is live at one of those. So you're talking about one of those. There's just like, a, there's, I mean, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on. Look at what's going on with sports books and where, mm -hmm. how's that going to evolve? It's a really energizing time right now. That's all I'll say. And I'm Amazon working, is getting yeah. in. Amazon's oh, getting in the game. Okay. I work with Chris Long and Andrew Hawkins at Amazon. We just had our last show yesterday and I was super sad about it. It was called NFL Next, a little half hour. I like the idea of, you know, the streaming, the, the loose survive. I know that's something that you really wanted to do and you didn't find it and you did your own thing. Yeah, well, hey, we're pulling for it. I think you'll be able to crush whatever. Go ahead, Ty. Okay, you've basically become the de facto queen of Cincinnati throughout this season. <laughs> um, when you look at, like, the Bills and the Chiefs and how explosive they've looked over the last few weeks, do you think the Bengals have gone from just, like, an exciting team that's really fun to watch to someone who could really actually, like, push those two teams in the AFC and potentially get to the Super Bowl? 
Yeah, today on the show, the guys were saying that the AFC Super Bowl is, is you know, between the Bills and the Chiefs. And if I'm a Titans fan and I'm a Bengals fan, I'm like, whatever. What else, yeah. dude? We can do this Fucking either. Much. But, I mean, the t- everyone sleeps on the Titans. They're the least talked about team in the NFL for some reason. It's that's like your so fault. Weird. Hey, that's the NFL's fault. Dan <laughs> You think? Yeah, Dan Zeus. Yeah. Dan, Dan Hanses, the, the representative. Oh, yeah. Dan. Yeah. I'll tell. I'll give him hell next time he's on our show later this week. Yeah, but he. But I mean, Derek Henry coming back. They, they're going to play for Vrabel. I'm going to say, the Bengal. It's Joe Burrow. Like I put him right up there with Allen and Mahomes when it comes to like I don't shake. I'm not going to flinch. He doesn't care. He doesn't. He is completely unrattleable, if that's a word. Oh. And I love that about him. I think that sort of trickles down to the whole offense. My big worry. I think they've got the offensive firepower, sure, to take on those teams. What happened to their D line is a drag beyond drags. Like to deal with Derrick Henry, Trey Hendrickson. Back with back with the Saints, I was like, uh, "Hey, Sean Payton and company, you guys sure you don't want to give this guy some money and let him stay here?" And they didn't. They let him go to the Bengals, and he had like a ten game sack streak. He's incredible, an absolute game breaker. And if he's hurt, we had Mike Daniels leave the game. He don't. I don't think he's coming back. Um, Ogunjabi, like it's just that D line up against Henry could not be a worse situation. So hopefully they can heal up through the week because that's my big worry. How do you balance having inside information and then also having to be live for three hours every single morning? Like you just said, hey, Sean Payton, don't you think you guys want Trey Hendrickson? And we know that you have a pretty good source at the Saints. I think there has been mm-hmm. some yeah. some times where, you know, okay, Adams is saying this about the Saints. So that means, hey, Probably, you know, you have to like kind of pick and choose. And now with, you know, how much your show has dominated the NFL, I assume you have a lot of friends in a lot of buildings. How do you pick and choose and how do you figure that out? You just kind of got to compartmentalize that or have you ever gotten to a point where, you know, you've said something you weren't supposed to say? It's kind of a game, I guess. I'm not an insider, though, so I don't want to put that out there like I I know. You know, when I say, hey, I just say it like through the show. I'll get on the air and I'll say it. I'm not like calling calling Mickey Loomis and hey that'd be sweet we think yeah. You, hey that'd be sweet if you did though like, hey Mickey we're I'm thinking. like Gail Benson <laughs> we gotta talk about no that's not what happens uh I guess I could I don't know I don't like I don't I just want I, I just enjoy the game uh so I call it like I see it I like to give I always my, my thing that I always go for the underdog it's why I like the Bengals that's why I like the Titans right now because no one's talking about them I never I, I always like the team's that for that people just don't want to give love. Like Mike Evans is someone I love. Look what he did yesterday. He oh, crushed it. He, he what did. does he do? He has a thousand yard seasons. He's the most consistent wide receiver in the game, and we just don't even talk about him. So those are the kind of players and people I think that I gravitate towards. And he also took a, a less salary to oh, sign yeah. other people. Mm-hmm. You know, he hit for our same game parlay. Scotty He's Miller. Scotty Miller couldn't catch another fucking ball, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just one more, K. Just one more. That would have been amazing for all the fantasy teams everywhere that that's had right. Scotty. Uh-huh. Fantasy's over. Fantasy's completely over now. No, you can still. Play. I mean, you can play over on Fanduel. Absolutely, you can do anything you oh, want to do. Hey, yeah. 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 free agent May. Yes, free agent I'm May. Go ahead, Carl. Yeah, K. You're uh, from Chicago. Do you lean to the Bears at all, or do you think they'll probably fucking stink forever? Come on. <laughs> I have no, it's so hard. I mean, people are bothering me about this on Twitter today. I will always love the Bears, but it's like being in a relationship. Like you need some space and you just say, grow up, get your stuff together. And like maybe we'll talk and we'll get back together in the future. At a certain point, like you need to just figure it out. And I'm excited for their future. And I think them getting rid, rid of pace uh, and walking away from Nagy is great. But now you're going to have a new guy go in there. And then it's Justin Fields wasn't drafted by that guy and wasn't coached by that coach or chosen. So, What's the future? Um, I will say, like, I'm from there, and you'd think that they'd want to, you know, include uh, me more. They kick you and, off. Or just, but, but, you know, I've never even been invited to a game. Oh! oh so the fuck? Fuck? Yeah. What's going on in Thanks. Chicago, Thanks. dude? Thanks. 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 Bro, she was lighting the torch at the Bengals game yeah. just a couple of days Bullshit. ago. She's banging the drum in Kansas City. <laughs> What's Virginia it's doing? Nagy says, keep her out of the yeah, building. Yeah, they don't, they don't. It's so interesting. It's my hometown, and they, you know, if you need help or support, just ask. And they just... 
they just don't. It's interesting. That's hilarious. I'm tired of wasting my energy on you not being able to figure out what the fuck you're supposed to do with your life. So <laughs> yeah. everybody else is inviting me to do stuff. They seem to be a lot more fun and successful. I will always care for you, but I got to move on as well for the good of yeah. me. That's Gorilla. a lot. That's a lot of fans, by the way. I think, especially in this time. Go ahead, Tone. Okay, not so much a question, more of a statement. When when the boys head outside and play around on the street, I just don't think that they involve you enough, and I think that you should bring up. Oh, the Wall one. Streeters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I've never asked to go. I've been asked to go, not for that segment. That's definitely a, a them production. I don't see the point in the cold in the middle of Manhattan <laughs> of going downstairs and playing in traffic. Sure. I like to make my coffee. I like to maybe make a smoothie during that time. I like to maybe eat a cookie and they go down there and I get some. It's nice and quiet when they leave. Oh. So those moments are very enjoyable. Oh, a little zen in the morning. But thank you Jeez. for caring about me like that. That's I really appreciate that. Hey, Tony, you're a good guy, Tony. Hey, you're a good guy, Tony. Hey, Tony, you're a good guy. Thank you, Tony. Steelers fan, man. boy, Tony. Tony was just thinking to himself, you know, free agency coming up in May, maybe a different side here, you uh, know, maybe get her out in the streets. I just know if she was from Pittsburgh, that organization would have invited her to a game. Yeah, well, Tone's trying to bring you over to the Steelers fan base. They are dead. They got killed. Ooh, yeah. They got absolutely killed. Who wins the Super Bowl here, Kay? Who do you think? Uh, in August, I picked Packers Browns. Yikes. Uh, hey, Browns, uh, so Browns I might say be Packers, dead. Packers Chiefs, I believe. Mahomes looked like 2019 playoff Mahomes. So I'll go Packers, Chiefs, Packers. Win. Yes! The Packers are just getting healthy at the right time. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope they win. Niners, tough draw for them, of course. Yeah, well, we'll go ahead and put that down in the record book. Yep. So you predicted the Packers to win the Super Bowl. She's a free agent in May. Hey, everybody <laughs> get the Brinks Trucks at for the Emmy-nominated Dominant host of Good Morning Football and People, ladies and gentlemen, fantasy expert, Kay Adams. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You're awesome. How about the Bears saying fuck off, dude? Pretty messed classic up. Crazy. Bears. What's Virginia that doing? That is classic Horrible. Bears. Come What's it all about, on. dude? You got head coaches telling Mitch he's an idiot. You know, you guys are buying... Uh, you know, property outside of Chicago. Uh -oh. I mean, what's going on over it there? It ain't good. I'll tell you that. It ain't good. I did not know Kay was a Chicago Bears fan because oh, literally the there's clips there. of her at Cincinnati yeah. being yeah. like in Quick. Kansas City yeah. mm -hmm. and everywhere. New Orleans, not oh, Chicago. Huh. Hour three is on the other side. We'll see you then. Nailed it. I mean, fucking nailed it for the radio. <laughs> Smashed it. I mean, right in the middle of still getting our point across. Yeah. Uh -huh. On the oh. screws. About all that. Thanks to Kay for joining us. That was her first time on the show. Yeah. yeah. She's great. It's awesome. She works not as hard as Boomer. No. No. Yeah. Nobody. I like Boomer's on TV Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Whoa. Three, four lines in between each game. Yeah. <laughs> My God. I mean, was, <laughs> he's killing it, man. Crushing. Oh, yeah. No word wasted. Boomer no. Sison. Mm -hmm. He's a king. He's working way harder than AJ Hawk today. I tell you that. Yeah. Hey, they told me Boomer doesn't even have a stat department at CBS. He's doing all his own stuff. What? Shut up. Doesn't have a producer over there. He's producing himself. Is research and development? Doesn't have anybody that does his suits or anything. He does that all himself. Yeah. Wow. Boomer's working harder than all of us. But, K, right there. Uh -huh. yeah. Good morning football is every single morning oh, yeah. on NFL Network. And then on Sunday morning, she's with the NFL Network kickoff show. Then she's normally traveling to some game. They got her. It, it is. She's on the road a lot yeah. out there. Yeah, and that People TV show, I think, is every night during the week, too. I, free agent in May is... Uh, Hey, I like it. Shams comes on here, free agent yeah. soon. Okay, hey, I'm a free agent in May. If everybody wants to start, go ahead and let that know. I appreciate it, and we would love to be a part of your leverage. There okay. we go. Because for far too long, a couple people got to decide who made money and who didn't. Hell yeah. Now in the modern world we're in, we're all about getting everybody getting their all their money. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Amazon, huh? Mm. That feels like a... Potential. She said she's already worked there. Mm -hmm. oh. She likes being on the field. She likes being at the game. Right. Yeah. Thursday nights. She wants a big time seat. What would that be, I wonder? Hmm. She'll figure it out. Somebody oh, yeah. will figure it out. Oh, yeah. She, um, the fantasy stuff. So that was what everybody was into before sports gambling, right? Because yes. uh -huh. I think I kind of missed that whole era because as I retired within like a year, sports gambling started becoming a thing. So I didn't even dive into the fantasy. I tried to, but it was so long. It was so much time, so much effort. I tried to get into it. I just didn't know how anybody who does 
does. More power to all the fantasy people all out right. there. It's a lot of work. I understand there's a little bit of a payoff at the end, too. And you feel like, hey, I could be a general manager in the NFL and everything like that. But it, it, with your fantasy brain, you could just go to sports gambling and win, right? Mm. Sure. Yeah. It's, more, it's kind of similar. Can't you? Like yeah, pretty up, close. Like picking props. Yeah. yeah, prop bets is basically fantasy football. Not really, though, because I won my fantasy championship this year, and I got fucking kicked in the teeth this weekend. So, you know, it is possible to be a very successful fantasy football GM and get your brains beaten in on Sunday by FanDuel. Well, I am not a successful fantasy GM, but I'll tell you what. I will take my fair share of fucking ass beating from yeah. FanDuel. That does not slow us down, though. No, no, no. In this third hour, we're talking to A.J. Hawk, Darius Butler. We'll be making our picks for tonight's Ooh. game as we look into the divisional round, which is going to be electrifying. It is Monday. Overrated takes. Huh. Okay. January 17th, 2022. We'll see you in about three, four minutes. Yins are the absolute best. Cheers. Smarter than you, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I am. I'm a better person than you are. No, yeah. no, no, yeah. no. I fed the birds this morning, so I'm a better person than you are. Yeah, but you don't care about, uh, you know, the ozone as much as I do. So do you even like to breathe? That means you don't even like the birds. You don't want the birds to be able to breathe or fly because you want the ozone to be ruined because you're a fucking asshole. Is that right? Then how come I rollerblade to the supermarket every Saturday and Sunday? Oh, did that make you feel good? Rollerblading, flattening the earth a little bit closer to the center so it can get hotter. So then the heat comes from the ozone because you're pressing down the earth with your little rollerblades. Wow. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm a better person than you are. No, because on Wednesdays I'm planting trees and I'm trying to bring the earth back to what it was. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you're cutting up other trees' roots, though. What a That's fucking right. asshole. Wow. You no, yeah, yeah. Uh, Why can't you just let earth be? the way it's sweet. you gotta take your shovel and dig into it wow you're, no, I'm, no. I'm a better you're person horrible. than you are I know dude. I make my own manure I make my own soil I'm not chopping up any other oh roots. so you don't like cows you don't like cows pooping oh, huh? I, I love hate cows. farmers you, you, you hate farmers oh I don't like a head of cows yeah. oh, oh you don't like burgers then how come I'm in the Farmers Association of America and I'm going it's to help you oh you're a lifetime member of the FFA hey yeah, that's right that's, that's what right. I make I'm a better person than you are. No, man. you're not. I'm a better person than you are. Dude, that's politics, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we just did right there. Let's get to the phones. <laughs> Once again, I think we batted a thousand. Boom. Yeah. In politics with what we just did right there. How about that? I do believe after that argument, though, people would say I was a better person than fucking you are, dude. No, 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 because everyone I just read on Twitter was like, oh my God, this guy really put time to start doing that. Thing. No, that's because you mute all the other people that are actually on my side and they're telling you you're not the right person. No, I refuse to mute anybody because I love everybody. Oh, you like freedom of speech. How come then you're, you're uh, not going to uh, uh, wow. I do love freedom of speech. That's wow. why I'm not muting anybody. I'm better than you, you are. are. I'm no, better I'm better than you are. are. Everybody saying it. No. Oh, yeah. yeah, everybody say I'm better no. person than you are. I heard it. Which is, by the way, still batting a thousand on Paul. Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel so good about it. We even got into the reaction to the punditry. Yes. <laughs> we're batting a fucking thousand out there. Mm -hmm. Every side. The people say we're not well rounded. We don't have depth. Did you hear what we just fucking did? Come on. Wow. Let's go to the phones, man. I went to one of his shows. He forced me into doing, hey, he's wearing football pants. <laughs> I think he's yeah, actual knee pads. Does he have a fake face on? Yeah, he has a fake face on. That is not Chris oh, Angel. Man. That or he's been eating McDonald's with Mark Davis for the last five years. I just want everybody know. Straight to his face. I just want oh, everybody know this is NFL related. Okay, uh -huh. yeah. we have yeah, to talk have to about this. Yes. We have to cover it. Why is his penis a different color? He's wearing oh, football pants. Oh, Tony. Tony. That's a. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show. Overreaction Monday. Okay. Jesus January 17, 2022. Hour three shall begin right 
Now, yeah. can't thank you enough for joining us wherever the hell you may be. The Toxic Table is here at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor. One half of the hammer, Dan. Cowboys at Tone Diggs is here. Tone, how did the sports books do this past weekend? Uh, who won? Did the public win or did the uh, house win? I would assume when 69,261 bets are on one particular parlay and that one loses by a half a fucking yard. Mm. That helps out the sports book. Although FanDuel is refunding everybody that uh, rode alongside of us. Not because it was a bad beat. This is going to happen, but because it was the spirit of the holiday, yep. the same game parlay holiday, they don't want to see the holiday be remembered in such epically terrible fashion where none of our parlays hit. So they said, hey, even though it was a half yard and a ref potentially misspotted it, you did lose, but we'll give the money back in the spirit of the holiday, and we appreciate it. Thank Thank you. You. Thank you. I assume the public did pretty well. All the favorites uh, won except for one and covered except for the Cowboys and the 49ers were a pretty trendy dog. Uh, so I think the public did pretty well. And there was a, a stat, and it's it's like 50 and 7 or something along those lines in Wild Card Weekend. If the team wins, they also cover the game. So Ooh. tonight, whoever you think is going to win the game, stats say, stats say is also going to cover the game. Who do you so. think is going to win the night? I kind of like the dog. Wow. Hey, 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 hey. Dogs are, are not, sorry, not dogs. Cardinals as a dog, I believe, are 6 and 0 ATS this year, and they are also 8 and 1 on the road, straight up and ATS. So. What is the uh, spread looking like <laughs> right now? Three and, three and a half. half three and a half mm -hmm. for the Arizona Cardinals who get JJ Watt back. Would that be a little bit of energy and juice as they fly into SoFi Stadium to take on Matthew Stafford, who has thrown seven picks in the last three games? But that defense of Aaron Donald, Jalen mm -hmm. Ramsey, and the boys, they have the speed and the ability to trap Kyler Murray and keep him in the well is how they describe it. Keep him inside and not make, you know, extending game-changing plays there. It's going to be a good one. I, I think ESPN's probably rather thrilled that this is the game that they get to uh, showcase. Yeah, I love this game. Hopefully it's the best one. It does worry me that Kate took the Cardinals, but I think I like the Rams and Matty Stafford kind of putting his junk on the line here and saying, hey, look, I can play quarterback and I can win a playoff game because – he never has, right? He's, he's never won a playoff game. Oh, three. So, I mean, he's got to win this one. And, like, I what don't, if he doesn't? If he doesn't, it's oh, bad. It's going to be loud. Yeah. Wow. It is going to be loud. Can tomorrow. they bring back Odell and Von Miller next year? Do they have the cap space? They don't have a first round pick. Okay, like they, out. they might. No. Yeah, they, they do smoke and mirrors with their cap. Yeah. yeah, right. And it's Los Angeles, and it's almost as if it doesn't apply to them. Huh. Interesting enough. Well, the cap doesn't apply to a lot of teams, and if we're going to get into this off season conversation, <laughs> uh -oh. let's get into it. Some teams have found out how they can just write everybody contracts and it not affect them at all. While other teams are like, well, our cap says, our cap says, and I want to know how are you both in the same goddamn league? This team signs 45 free agents to max deals somehow. We'll pay them in 2045, but we'll get this off the books. And other teams are like, well, our cap. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't uh -uh. budge with our cap. And whenever we get towards the end of the season, it's, it's very easy to kind of judge and say what teams could have done or how they could have done things and who they could have signed. But when you talk about the Rams, when they added Vaughn Miller, Vaughn wasn't a necessary game changer. You look at the last couple games, though, Vaughn Miller has been in there on the last play of the game, the last series of the game making plays. Aaron Donald's been there. Jalen Ramsey's been there. Well, the defense not allow Matthew Stafford to lose this game tonight is what a lot of people have to think to themselves. And Kyler Murray is the perfect quarterback that can make something out of nothing. No matter how great the Rams defense is, Kyler can always make some magic. And Kay Adams alluded to it. James Conner has 18 tuds or something like that. If he gets rolling early and they have a play action potential or at least a threat in the box for Kyler to move, maybe, just maybe, you know, with Hurts out there. Mm-hmm. And A.J. Green out there. Man. And Kyler Murray being a goddamn guy. Maybe this is the time the Cardinals get a dub, and that would be heartbreaking for Matthew Stafford and family after going 0-3 in the playoffs thus far. It feels like it, we could talk about everyone else on the field, but it comes down to Stafford and Kyler Murray tonight. Because both of these two can turn in games where we're like, what the fuck just happened? And both can light it up. And I wish A.J. Hawk was here with us. Kind of. Just tell him to get in the Zoom. Yeah, so he can't hear us now. So he, he unplugged something. Well, what the hell's going but, on? Uh, okay. States, dude. We, we figured out, though, the, the microphone sounds better now with the Zoom. and 
but maybe, he, maybe another minute here. No, but, he, but he can't hear us. No, because I would like him to join us to chat about this because we talk about it being Matthew Stafford and Kyler Murray, and that's real. I guess that's every single game. How are the quarterback playing? In this particular case, though, who will either make a play for their team or give the other team a chance to win this thing? And that's all dependent upon how the defense plays. you got to think J.J. and Chandler and yeah. Buda and Simmons and everybody on that defensive side of Arizona is ready to feast on the current turnover machine that is Matthew Stafford. But on the flip side, Sean McVay knows that. Yep. Sean McVay knows that that's potentially a problem. Sean McVay knows like, hey, we got to get this ball out of Stafford's hands quick. We got to get him into a rhythm early. And then we start taking our shots and picking and choosing when we got to go. And on the flip side of this whole thing, that Rams defense, they, they're star studded. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. From line to safety mm -hmm. and all players in between. They've been winning games the last four weeks because of the defense and how stout they have been. It's the defense that's going to make these quarterbacks either be amateur or elite. And I guess that is where we got to keep our eyes. Speaking of safety, did you see who's back at safety for the Rams? That's what I'm saying. The bearded wonder. <laughs> Come on. He, that guy, what, two years he's been out? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Still in shape. Loved his time in L.A. You know, Love he goes it. back to the Rams. I wonder how the beard looks, the fresh, bald head, the body Ooh. is probably feeling good. If we talk to Weddle a couple of times, it's hard not to say this guy's probably going to be in shape for the rest of his life. So he gets a chance here to go on a playoff run with a defense that is loaded. He's not going to have to make every play, just kind of get in there and make some plays. I'm pumped for the Rams adding depth. Not only Vaughn Miller, who's come to fruition completely, but Eric Weddle is now active for tonight's game. What does that mean? None of us know. What are we going to say, Nick? Right now, currently at FanDuel Sportsbook, you can get Matthew Stafford to throw an interception at yes for <laughs> minus 122. Hmm. So he's... Minus 122. Wow. John Sheeran over there at FanDuel. Jeez. That Irish guy is like, he's throwing seven in the last three, and we just think that's going to stop mm -hmm. when the playoffs happen. Not a chance. I might take no. There, but this is the problem. Minus 108. Oh, sir. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I mean, definitely better, I guess, but also, like, no respect really no. at all. No. <laughs> no respect for Matthew Stafford. Whatsoever. <laughs> no, no. This is like whenever we're looking at Chiefs games and we're trying to figure out who to bet on. We automatically think of like the best Chiefs they could possibly be, and they were mm -hmm. against the Steelers. And if that's who they're going to be, by the way, going forward, look at everybody because there is a pain train coming through. No more X Factor in the stands. No, that's right. No more super fan drama, just all ball. Jackson Mahomes' curse has maybe been lifted because what the Chiefs did to the Steelers after Jackson Mahomes did his thing on the sideline. Maybe that thing's completely dead and they're ready to go. But whenever you think about the Rams, are we just automatically thinking the best possible Rams? Matthew Stafford lighting it up Rams? Defense flying around Rams? Are we thinking about actual reality the last three weeks Rams, which is the defense has been saving the shit out of the offense and they've been kind of sneaking by with some wins? That's... That's gambling, baby. I guess that's the entire problem. Well, and isn't that what we always talk about is, hey, it's not always the best team that wins the Super Bowl. It's the team that's playing the best at that moment and gets hot going into the playoffs, and they aren't that team right now. Well, so neither are they. Really. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. And I, it seems like a lot of, of times, or at least in recent memory, the Rams have kind of played to whatever level their opponents are at. So we'll see. Maybe like the being hyped up to have a home playoff game and everything changes everything a little bit. But I think you still do have to worry about Stafford trying to do too much and throwing a pick six or you know something along those lines. Kyler has the ability to do this past everybody. Yeah, yeah. No matter what the team. Now Aaron Donald is much faster, more explosive than most inside defense alignment, and Von Miller is an absolute freak. But if we see a lot of Kyler moving and rolling and sliding. That's not good for the Rams. Maybe they got Jalen spying them. Ooh, that'd probably be the right move, especially without Hopkins, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like he's not playing, so you could probably. Jalen is such a specimen. I'm excited to see Jalen Ramsey do something tonight that's just like, yeah. of course. He floats through the air and makes plays. He'll blow somebody up. Then he'll be very close to getting a taunting penalty because he will let them know that they are a punk bitch. Mm -hmm. I love Jalen Ramsey. I wish he was on... The Colts. I wish Jalen yeah, Ramsey no. was on any team that I was a fan of because of how he plays. Hopefully we get a chance to see him work tonight. Joining us now from his attic in Ohio for, on a computer that updated and can no longer FaceTime, I guess, via Zoom. So he'll freeze every fourth or fifth word. College football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup champion, COVID survivor, ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Yay! Hey! Oh! 
How, how's it sound? Okay. Wow. Man. Here we go. You did it, AJ. Hey, thanks for battling through, dude. I really appreciate you doing that. I know you cannot be happy about the situation <laughs> happening. I mean, I, I don't know if you can see him sweating. I've been running back and forth. I've had 19 different setups trying to figure out what's going on here. Yeah, and I realized, don't ever update your computer. That's the that's the, the lesson. I get an update to ask every single day on this computer. I haven't done it in years. I don't know how to work this one other than just tell me how many people are watching at one time. But, AJ, I appreciate you battling through and sweating. Thank Boy, you, hard. AJ. Thank, Thank you, AJ. AJ. He just tried to do the right thing. He just tried to update. Yeah, I want to update. I want to be in the current. I want to be in the now. I want the best version for the good of the show. And instead, fucking ruined everything. Missed an hour and 13 minutes. Uh, but it's great to have you here, AJ. Uh, Super Wild Card Weekend. Same game, Parlay Holiday. You, me, Foxy, Dirty, we're half a yard away from a plus 1,000 same game parlay hitting for 69,261 betters. AJ, it was a heartbreaker, but what a fucking weekend. Yeah, what a weekend. It makes me question like everything when it's eight and a half yards for Scotty. Yeah, I agree. He probably got nine on the play. Like what made that guy set the line at eight and a half and not eight? Uh, they're time traffickers. Yeah. They have to be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's bullshit. I've literally said it numerous times that the people that are out in the desert making uh, these decisions on certain 69,261 people riding on this bet. <laughs> okay? 69 plus 1,000. It would have hit them for 10 million plus. Yeah. That's actual stats. Uh, they would have lost 10 million plus yesterday because of this whole thing. Plus 1,000 is a huge. Those are big boy odds. Oh, yeah. Massive. What is the percentage of a plus 1,000 hitting? 9%. We happen to fall into the 91% that didn't hit. It was because of half a fucking yard because the ref fucked us. But AJ, it makes you wonder about everything and question everything. And I actually, legitimately, just like I didn't expect to feel that Colts lost in Clontan to the Jacksonville Jaguars as much as I did, I did not expect for that linger of shit to stick on my body for as long as it did last night. I was a miserable person to be around last night for a good three hours after that entire thing because i had i was shaping the promo i was shaping the promo while watching that game scotty gets eight yards in the second quarter no problem mike evans gets a touchdown no problem gronk gets a touchdown no problem tampa minus two and a half that shit was covered before the game even started now we just need scotty to get one more catch so every single time that son of a bitch came on the field for three quarters Damn near three quarters. I'm watching them like, ah, oh, here we go. This is the one we got to worry about. This is the one that boosted the odds. Two plus 1,000, by the way. You know, a lot of people, well, why'd you even have Scotty on there? Oh, well, that's a fucking odds booster. Okay, pal? That's what you got to do whenever you're piecing together a same game parlay that has to be above plus 400 because they're going to promote it to a mass amount of people, and so are you. So if we're going to do this, let's do this. I watched him every play. It was exhausting by the end of it when he went out on a little out route and Giovanni Bernard went the other way and Tom picked Giovanni over Scotty. You son of a bitch, Tom! Thanks for the gift you sent to the office. That was very nice. Congrats on all the success. It was very, very nice of you. But just look to your left. Just throw the ball. And then Scotty Miller coming out of the huddle. Tom goes, hey, Scotty, over here, Scotty. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, Scotty, over here. Oh, wait, wait. Scotty may, may, might be running just a quick little out here. Maybe Tom's like, hey, Scotty, let's go ahead and get you another one here because we're going to need you for the playoff push. No, end around, turn around, bye. How you doing? He runs for nine yards. Mm which is over eight and a half, obviously, but it doesn't matter because it was rushing, not receiving. It was tough. I was beat up, though. I was beat up. And that promo that was coming, oh, oh. I get it. So it was the, the roller coaster, I feel like, because after the first half, I wasn't feeling it's great about it. Hitting. I'm like, all right, well, here we go. I don't know. And then all of a sudden, bam, all right, now, yeah, this is absolutely happening. And to think it all it took was Scotty to get that extra, what, over, he had to get three quarters of one yard. To, to get us over the, the hump, right? Yeah. Like I thought, yeah, of course it's going to happen, isn't it? Well, they don't keep stats as quarters of yards because... They would he, give him the full yard, though, hopefully. If yeah, he got it. yeah, I mean... Not here, though. That's nine yards. He's, well, That's, he's over nine. Well, then there's also a fucking one on him laying on his back at nine yards. I mean, and by the way, I think this alongside, like, the spirit of the same game parlay holiday and nobody else's parlay hitting is why FanDuel's like, All right, hey, we will refund everybody, okay? Not because this is a bad beat. This is not a bad beat. This happens in gambling. You're going to lose by a half a yard, just like we did when Tom Brady took a fucking knee. God damn it. Hey, credit to FanDuel, though, for giving people their money back here. Thank you, FanDuel. Thank, Thank you, FanDuel. 
I do though. I do like the fact that it seems like they've gotten the point across to you though. Hey, let people know this ain't happening again. Like this is a one time deal. That, that is, yeah. Hey, we're gonna for the spirit of the holiday. Okay, this it is- should be too. It should be. It shouldn't be like it shouldn't just always do that. But I think it's awesome for how big it was, how close it was. Spirit of the holidays. Why not just? Do it this time, and obviously don't expect it again. Well, we appreciate that from FanDuel, obviously. And it does not change how I feel at all, because I would have rather had it hit yeah. and take yeah. $10 million from them. Uh-huh. That would have been the world's largest gambling hit in the history of sportsbook. Not that somebody hasn't bet $10 million somewhere right. before. 69,261 bettors all hitting. That has to be some sort of record. But instead, you know, just like Foxy texted us, AJ, yeah. instead of being the biggest, obviously, we are... Losers, Pat. The biggest losers. This guy two times. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it was your text, Foxy. It's hey, right. you got to be the best at something. Yeah, I, I would prefer not to be that, but I guess if we're going to do it, we might as well be the biggest loss. So let's talk about some of the games, AJ. I can't wait to get your take. We got Darius Butler joining us here in a little bit. Uh, the Bills are a wagon, dude. The Patriots got absolutely embarrassed. I mean, I was ass. Yeah, Molly beat. walked. I mean, just it was bad. Dog walked out there. Is that more on Josh Allen and the Bills, the Patriots? How do you feel? Colin Cowherd, uh, we, <laughs> once again, we're on at the same time. We have a lot of respect for Colin. We have a lot of respect for Colin. He's yeah. been doing it for a long time. Competitive stamina, very impressive. But I only saw the tweet. He's saying that the Patriots should trade Mac Jones. Yes. Why? <laughs> Uh, just because, you know, he's not, I believe, a blue chip uh, stock in the uh, NFL. When you look at Josh Allen, he only had four incompletions. He had five touchdowns. I don't know if Mac Jones is going to get it done. Well, Josh Allen is the new creme de la creme of the AFC East, and the Patriots have now become Powerade, Adidas, and Phil Mickelson in the AFC East. But that Bills team looked great. It was cold as hell. Bildos were flying. I love watching that Bills team play the way they played. And that seems like a team that would be fun to be a fan of, A.J. Hawk. Oh, my God. Fun to be a It makes you want to play on their team, doesn't it? Like, when I watch the Bills play, especially when they routed the Patriots on that freezing cold night in front of their fans, too, it looked sold out to me. It looked like everybody traveled. They found a way to fill those seats, right? Yeah, we got a video from somebody in there. Say, hey, Patty, we're fucking here, aren't we? Was his exact quote with an incredible mustache, this guy. Uh, Because the Canadians couldn't get across the border to get into the stadium or they couldn't get back because of a testing protocol. There were some seats that were available. A lot of people questioned, oh, does Bill's Mafia even care? They showed up. They want bananas. They threw bildos. And that team is going to be a tough out regardless. Josh Allen played damn near perfect game. But when you watch him extend plays and run people over and make decisions and then the energy he he radiates amongst his teammates it's like man that's why i thought carson was going to be mm-hmm. you know for the indianapolis colts this dude is a fucking star and he loves being in buffalo i think it's the perfect quarterback for buffalo I, absolutely do you, I'm, i assume you guys talked about when he picked up old buddy's uh, imaginary jock off the ground when he when he juked the guy in the open field going towards the, the left sideline? No, we have not talked about that, but you're right. You dropped your jock right there, cuz. I mean, that is classic. Uh, he he was running power, dude. He was running power. He but, couldn't miss either. Like, that that touchdown to Dawson Knox, I, I read him, at, read what he said afterwards. He thought he was throwing it away originally, really, and then Dawson Knox comes down with this thing. Like, that was fun, but what sparked everything, I feel like, what really got him going was that Micah Hyde pick in the end zone. Yeah. If that goes, if the Patriots catch that and win, and Micah doesn't make one of the best interceptions I've seen covering so much ground, like that game could have, you know, gone a little different direction. Ever, by the way, stealing a home run over old buddy's head, and then he goes out of bounds at the goal line, right? Yeah. He actually the hit zone. the pylon. Didn't he hit the pylon? He was, yeah. Right. He, I think he hit. He was right to the right of it. Yeah. And he he shifted the ball into his left or whatever to protect it too. Yeah. I mean, what an incredible play! Didn't make the Pro Bowl because this guy stinks. By the way, my guy oh, okay. did not make the Pro Bowl because he stinks. Same with Jordan Poyer and all the boys out there on that Buffalo Bills defense. But the, there's a couple plays that happen during a game that really swing everything. And when he did this i literally sent a tweet to connor saying oh uh, micah micah just stole all of your joy that is the game it is over pal and i felt like you felt the same exact way yeah i was devastated because after that that was a really good opening drive by mac jones like it was a third and 11 uh, i think the play right before that he ran for the first down like it didn't look as though he was rattled or it was too big of a moment for him but then when mike Hyde <laughs> makes that play and you see what josh allen is doing because he is so good that offense goes as he goes, and he was 
unbelievable on Saturday night. So after that pick, it was basically like, okay, we're, we don't really have a shot here because they're going to score on every single possession. Joining us now is a nine-year – and it also felt like Josh wasn't scared at all. No. Of Bill Belichick. No. There was no longer like the, oh, they're going to do some stuff you haven't seen before. Josh looked very comfortable at the line of scrimmage, looking at what they were doing, breaking it down, checking plays. He just looked like such a superior player than he had ever looked against an opponent that has danced on the graves of Bills for 20 20 years. What a moment for all Bills Mafia. Yeah, and even when the Bills came to uh, New England a few weeks ago, I mean, he made every single throw, beat the shit out of us then in Gillette. So, yeah, it, it, it is, in fact, Josh Allen's division until, you know, the future. Yeah, you guys are a power raid right now. Joining us, uh, Adidas, Phil Mickelson, not a big deal. Those are all great things. Oh, yeah. Adidas is a lot cool. of success, yeah. dude. A lot of success, but just number two there. And that feels like that's what the AFC East is going to look like for some time. Joining us now, nine year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB. He played corner, nickel, and safety. One of the greatest football minds that we have ever heard, ladies and gentlemen, Darius Butler. Yeah. Yeah. Fellas, 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 what's up? Hey, Debo, let's dive right into it. Scotty Miller got fucked out of a yard by the ref. That should have been nine yards, dude. <sighs> fucking Scotty. Get in your fucking playbook, Scotty. <laughs> First and foremost, get lined up. How the hell did we get Scotty on the ticket, man? But I rolled, got our money back. And, uh, you know, we're good. All is good. All is well. Okay, so let's start talking about some of these teams. Uh, the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen looks like the prototype right now. I know you've been big on Justin Herbert. Same body, yep. similar style of play as Josh Allen. And if he molds his game into what Josh Allen has been able to mold his game into over the years, getting better and better, obviously the Chargers fans would be pumped about that. But who's stopping Josh Allen right now in that Bills offense? I don't know how. He's big. He's fast. He extends plays. It feels like he can't miss throwing how do you stop that dude d-butt i mean really only only he can stop himself i mean he's one of those players that are he's he kind of up and down he's a little inconsistent here and there but if he's playing like that and especially that adverse weather if you look at mac jones on the other side he looked absolutely miserable wow. like all game long wow. his face was all tied up josh allen he looked like you know without the sleeves he was playing on a 70 degree day you know he, that was a great quarterback in game for any weather uh, let alone that, but um, I, 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 I've never seen a, a Belichick uh, team or defense try out there and just get uh, <laughs> trounced like that. Shit uh, it on. <laughs> they had a good start, man. Michael, Michael Hyde with that interception, um, that changed things around it. And Josh Allen never, never blinked. I mean, no punts, no field goals, no turnovers. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen that, especially uh, in the playoffs. That was that was incredible. It's never happened. <laughs> it's the first time. You know, there you go. Ever. A perfect game. A That's perfect. Crazy. Game. Hey, it was, I mean, it pretty much was perfect by Josh. It was fun to watch. But I wanted to pivot to the Bengals Raiders. Joe Burrow has obviously people very excited in Ohio. Like, do the Bengals actually have a chance? I think I may have asked you this the last time you were on, but now they go, they win a big playoff game. Joe Burrow is, I mean, absolutely on fire right now this last month. Great like, what, what are their chances? Great sunglasses. I mean, they obviously they got a chance. You know, they got a puncher's chance. Um, you know, great, great talent on the offensive side of the ball. Same on the defensive side. You know, we'll see if Trey Henderson is back. Uh, for the next round, I know he went out of the last game, but I mean, you got you got the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC who's been doing this since Mahomes been there. You got the Bills who are wagging. You got some teams who have kind of been there, done that, and this is kind of the Bengals. You know, first time there with Zach Taylor, first win, thirty-one years playoff win for the city, so huge. But uh, they got a chance because Joe Burrow, twenty-five years old, he's only in the second year, but he looks like the moment is never too big. So on uh, that team, he can lead that team, and those guys believe in him. So they definitely got a, punch, a puncher's chance. Um, but it's going to be tough. A lot of people aren't talking about Tennessee, and Tennessee is the one seed. They found ways to win all year. Derrick Henry coming back at home. Uh, Mike Vrabel, probably the coach of the year this year, he'll have his guys flying around. So, uh, I mean, the uh, Bengals are the dogs right now, and I'm sure a lot of people will be betting on them. But uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't write those Tennessee Titans off yet. Yeah, the Titans haven't been talked about all year, especially once Derrick Henry got hurt so many weeks yep. ago. But Vrabes has done nothing but figure out ways to win down there. A lot of grit in the locker room. People got to go through Nashville if they want to make it in the AFC. Good luck down there. Mm. Good luck in the Music City. And whenever you talk about Joe Burrow, it felt like he was the only one in all of Cincinnati, including Zach Taylor, that said, hey, we haven't done shit yet. That was the post-game interview. He was like, yeah, we haven't really won anything. Let's keep it moving. It's like, well, for 31 years, 
years, this was not even something that was feasible yeah. in Cincinnati. So who knows about the hangover, the celebration, and Zach Taylor is out karaoke and giving a game ball mm -hmm. to the city. I let's, love it. Let's, I do too. Let's hope Delta Cron, though, wasn't in there dancing. Oh, no. Let's hope Delta Cron wasn't in there dancing with Zach Taylor. You know, you're finally winning, That's Zach. Right. I, I wish they enjoyed the hell out of that. Those moments don't come a lot. I do like the fact that Joe Burrow acted like it wasn't a big deal. Let's go to Tampa Bay. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, obviously, Scotty Miller only gets eight yards instead of nine, which is what 69,260 people needed to happen. It would have been nice. A lot of people. Whoa, so many people. Yeah. I thought about the other sports books who haven't even had 69,000 bets on their entire platform looking at this going, what the fuck? How are they going to be able to handle a $10 million loss, especially as Evan scores, Gronk scores. What? The alternate spread looks very obvious from literally the first quarter. All we need is another yard. I mean, that's banana land. But let's talk about the good from Tampa because all we've talked about is the negative with Scotty Miller only getting eight yards. They never looked like they were doubting anything. I don't think they played anywhere near perfect in any facet of the game but they're just winning games and dominating people is that more because of the eagles or do you think the bucks are going to continue to climb knowing that you know football matters now i mean this is the time of the year you don't you don't bet against brady obviously but once again that was the eagles hurts making his playoff debut sirianni a great year overall but making their playoff debut and that eagles team you know, it wasn't good all year against, you know, winning winning teams, playoff teams, I think, defeated Promise. all year. So uh, you went down there in Tampa, and I think uh, what happened, most people expected. But uh, a little concern uh, with, with Tampa, man. Um, it started off a little shaky there earlier. Brady wasn't on the same page with a lot of new guys that are going to be have to play big roles down the stretch because as the game goes on, people are going to take care of Mike Evans or try to at least. And people are probably going to have an eye or two on Grunk. He's not going to be wide open in the end zone like he was um, yesterday. So uh, and then Worth, Worth. Uh, we'll see what happened with Worth, the all-pro right tackle who went out. Um, this is kind of why you like these bye weeks. But a um, little concern there, uh, especially if you're going to have to go to Lambeau at some point. Or uh, I'm not worried about whoever comes out of this, this game tonight and plays them next week. I think Tampa will handle that. But uh, if you got to go to Lambeau and, mm -hmm. beat, uh, and beat Aaron Rodgers, I'm a little concerned with Tampa in that, that regard. d Butcher said tonight don't mean fucking shit. Wow. <laughs> Whoever wins tonight, they're going to Tampa, and they're going to get run out of the Gulf of Mexico, pal. Go ahead, AJ. Speaking of that, going to Lambeau, so San Francisco beats Dallas yesterday. They're going to head to Lambeau. What do you Ooh. make of the game yesterday? Obviously, weird, very bizarre ending. And do you think San Fran has a chance? I know they need to check on uh, Warner and Nick Bosa to see if they'll be healthy, which is – will be huge for them. But what do you think, like, what's going to happen when they go to Lambeau? It's freezing cold. Jimmy obviously has this thumb situation. Like, what are they going to do? Obviously try to run. But Warner put out a tweet. Yeah, he tweeted. Warner, he said he'll be ready to go next week. Yeah, he'll Warner said he's good. Oh, yeah, I saw him tape, uh, get AJ taped up, and okay. I thought he was going to go in. But Bosa, obviously, that's, you know, a, a, <laughs> an amazing pass rush. So you got to have him out there uh, to give you a better chance. But, I mean, this is the team. Packers fans, I think, were Cowboys fans yesterday. They wanted Cowboys to win this game. Um, you don't get the fuck out of here. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! This, this is a bad. Oh, he's game, right. He's right, Ty. No, a lot of people knew this was a bad draw for the Cowboys. Even getting the, the, the 49ers are just built to beat certain teams, and we saw the matchup a couple years ago when uh, the 49ers went up there to Lambeau. Um, they're going to run the ball. Uh, Shanahan is going to do you know his thing in the run game. Just going to come down to Jimmy. Because he's going to have a couple what-the-fuck throws every game. And if is the, are those going to cost you or not? Because you know Aaron Rodgers aren't going to have those. And Green Bay is getting healthy at the right time. So, um, they, once again, they got a chance. Jimmy has won in the playoffs. Uh, 49ers obviously got the recipe to win and to get to a Super Bowl. But Aaron Rodgers, if he continues his MVP season and you get these uh, all pros back on defense, you got uh, Bakhtari back up there to tackle. Uh, I mean – I'm still going with Packers to win, but this is, you know, this is a scary matchup for them. Yeah, I think the Niners can be a scary matchup for anybody strictly because if they get rolling, it is tough to stop. Once, they got bullies, man. Dude, they do. And and by the way, once you start having success, the bullies, once bullies start having success, oh. it, it only it only empowers them even more. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, I ran you over last time we're out here. There's going to be more of that. And it's like, if you can't stop it early, it's going to be a long day. And that is not because I've been out there in that situation. AJ, you could probably allude to this more. But just as a spectator, it feels like whenever something like that gets rolling, that's why Derrick Henry, it, and they'll be patient with it. They're like, hey, 
If it doesn't work in the first quarter, we'll do it in the second yeah. quarter. If it doesn't work in the second quarter, we'll do it in the third quarter. But at some point when it happens, they just continue to go. What is it, AJ? You just kind of lose confidence? Or is it because they just have figured out your scheme and everything? Well, if they're if, if, a lot of times it's because they are physically dominating you up front. And if a team can come out from the first series and kind of have their way with you and pound the ball. Like I, I always said to people, if we come out there the first drive, we're on defense, they have the ball first, let's say – Something happens. We have a guy miss a tackle, and he breaks a 60-yard run for a touchdown. Like, yeah, of course. You're freaking out. You're mad. But you know, like, hey, these guys can't move the ball on us. It's kind of a yeah. fluke thing. That's not a, That doesn't worry you as much. What worries you is when a team just systematically works the ball down the field, and they do it mainly through running the ball and falling forward and picking up big first downs on, like, third and shorts, stuff like that. So that's why I want Green Bay's defense, hopefully, to come out and, and find a way to stand up physically early Try to let them know, like, hey, you're not going to be able to run on us and put it in Jimmy's hands. And whenever you see, and Debo, uh, whenever you see Kittle and Juszczyk mm -hmm. and Debo just headbutting each other, it's like they're in their groove. And then Shanahan's calling his shit with that nerd from Yale. Yeah. Yeah. It, just, it seems like they're running like a motion <laughs> offense in basketball. It starts to feel like they're running a basketball-like offense in 2022, and it's just unstoppable almost. Yeah, lot, they got a lot of moving parts uh, pre-snap. So um, you have to simplify your defensive game plan because of all the guys and those names you named. Uh, you, Juice, you don't know where he's going to line up as a fullback. He could be in the slot. Kittle, he can line up on the outside. Debo, he can be in the backfield or at the slot or out wide. So you got all their playmakers that can be. Brandon Ayuk has come along and he's played great down the stretch. So they got guys that are coming and playing. Uh, playing ball at the right time. But I got I to gotta ask AJ about this guy, Mike, man, McCarthy. What's going on? With the hey, let's get to it. Let's talk about the Cowboys. They've had time management issues all season. Even when Big Mike wasn't there and somebody else was coaching, there was time management issues. If we were to look back on the season in Blues Clues this thing, sure. there would be little <laughs> droppings all season of, hey, this team might be fucked when it comes to situational awareness. And then the way the season ends is in the most embarrassing, catastrophic way that could possibly Possibly happen seems like you're getting back in now the Niners were dominant okay the Niners were dominant and then all of a sudden Dallas found a spark it might have been an overthrow might have been a pick whatever yep. the case was they had their spark they were getting back in there the play call obviously in question I mean what are we doing if that goes down five yards earlier maybe that saves them enough time to kind of get a spike in there but time management hasn't been their thing all year D but and those types of things show up when they show up you never yeah. know about it until it shows up and here we are in the biggest way talking about this all off season for sure yeah that, that was i mean I, I hated the play call and you know people have been talking about it you know ad nauseum the 14 second mark i don't think that's enough time it's everything has to go even if he goes down four or five yards earlier everything just has to go right you got to depend on the ump to be in place you get him the ball he has to place the ball it's just too many variables in that situation obviously the the you know line niners are playing a picket fence and guarding the sideline but you can't do that and even before that and i heard you talking earlier about how you were in chuck's ear about wanting to run a fake punt and stand on the field against the defense or run yeah. another play we I'm never did Chuck it fucking yeah, ignored we never you. did it that, <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do as a head coach we never did it yeah yeah no we're not doing that dumb shit. we got a defense on the field we're not concerned about the punt team running a play against our defensive unit so uh, that was that was terrible. Obviously, the 14 penalties, um, a lot of them pre-snap dead ball penalties. One of them, I don't know what happened with Gregory just body slamming the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. offensive guard pulling. Do you think he had the but, ball? Do you think Gregory thought that the lineman had the ball? Had he, was to. Coming off a block. he was coming off a block. Maybe he didn't see it, and he's like, all right, I'm going <laughs> to take this dude down. He had to, but it was hilarious to see. Because I, I, I saw the call at the point in the game, like, oh, come on, man. It's got to be a – terrible call to call holding on defensive player and then you show the replay yeah it was it was it was actually the right call the refs got one right but on uh, that's 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 bad man I know a lot of people calling for mike mccarthy's head i'm not usually that guy but um this was this was uh this was a big letdown this was kind of a super bowl to bust year you look at that roster so um uh, I, I think mike but I think Mike, man, I might be with Dane on this one today. Mike might have to get out of there, man. And Jerry Jones didn't talk about it or address it, and we all assume that he will not fire Mike McCarthy. I thought Jerry said. I thought Jerry came out and said that's not an option. I did not. Did he say it's not an option? I thought he said he'll address it later. I, I didn't hear. Oh, I read something where I thought he said like that's not a. We're not even talking about that. Steven might have said something along those lines. Yeah, I, maybe. I'm not. It didn't feel like he's going to fire Mike McCarthy, but boy, it got loud for Mike to get run out of town. But this is. You know, classic Cowboys, and I hate to say this, and Cowboys yeah. fans hate saying this, the hype felt real this year. 
They had a lot of money invested. Dak's playing lights out. Kellen Moore, uh, Kellen Moore is this new boy wonder who's getting head coaching opportunities now. Dan Quinn's career has been revitalized. Micah Parsons, this guy might be a game changer forever. We might have found the new. And then here we are, another another early exit, not even making it past Wild Card Week. And it's like, at what point do you think the Cowboys go on a run? And do you think it's even possible? Do you think that place is potentially cursed, <laughs> Darius Butler? No, nah, it's definitely possible, man. They got, I mean. I don't know what, what they need to change, but you you have the players. That's the hard part is getting the players. You got your quarterback locked up, who I think is still that think Dak is a top ten quarterback in the league. Um you, that offense, that offense, they they fooled a lot of people. They put up a lot of points against some bad teams uh late in the year. And the defense has kind of been kind of feast or famine all year. You know, they'll make you pay when you, you put that ball in the air. You you get behind the sticks, these pass rushers get after you. But um uh, just playing discipline football down in, down out, they weren't really doing that. And uh, they got exposed yesterday. 49ers tried. They tried their damnness to give him a chance at the end. It shouldn't even have been in Dak's hands if, uh, you know, Jimmy just waits for Trent to get set and run the sneak. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's ugly for Dallas right now. And at some point, I mean, they're, they're going to be talked about. They're still going to get all the primetime games. You know, Jerry's still going to do his thing. But at some point, you got to start winning some playoff games. Bro. Hey, top 10 quarterback winning a Super Bowl? Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you got a deep. I think. I mean, overall, all things considered, I think Dan Quinn and his defensive unit played good enough this year to, you know, still be playing. I, I, I got to put a lot of this on the offense. I got a lot of put a lot of it on Mike McCarthy, a lot of it on Kellen Moore, and then a lot on Dak. Oh, you know, uh, I think that's where, you know, that shit it flows downhill. So uh, it is what it is. Hey, the finality of it all is so quick, too, because that defense, with the way they're playing, they probably assumed, hey, we're going to go on a little bit of a run here. We just got to be able to stop the run. We'll be okay. Jimmy's yep. going to give us one. There's going to be a couple overthrows. We're going to be able to get back in this game, and all of a sudden, it's over. The Cowboys that were supposed to be are, once again, never was. And now we have a whole offseason of Jerry Jones articulating the fact that we will now rest without getting a winner here in Dallas. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Darius, uh, tell me something good, dude. What the hell <laughs> are the Patriots going to do? What do they need to do? And follow-up question, should they trade Mac Jones? Should, should they trade Mac Jones? Well, yeah, that's what... Uh, we, that's what we were alluding we, to it earlier. We didn't know. We didn't get to hear the whole clip. But Colin Cowherd, wow. we read a tweet. We have a lot of respect. Come on, Colin. Hey, First we have respect for Colin. Hey, no, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we have do. respect for Colin. We have respect for Colin. Hey, me too. Okay. I've been on the herd a couple of times. Rock, but no, you're not trading Mac Jones. He, you know, he, he he's Can't the win. best rookie quarterback this year. Uh, he ran into a rookie wall late. I think we all saw it. And then at this point in the year, if you're a defensive coordinator – especially one of the caliber of uh, Leslie Frazier with one of the top defenses in the league. You got a young statue quarterback who isn't that athletic. That That's what you want in the playoffs at this time of the year. That's what Mac Jones is. Um, and then you don't have dynamic uh, pass catches on the outside for the Patriots right now. So I think Mac will be fine. I think the Patriots will be fine. But it's a completely different ball game when you're not winning the division. You don't got Tom Brady on the center. And then uh, on defense, you had a lot of guys that missed some snaps. Um, out there as well. So you ran to a buzzsaw with Josh Allen too, man. They, the way they played, like it was just the perfect storms. I think the Patriots will be fine. No, Belichick will be back next season. And Mac Jones will continue, uh, you know, to get better. Yeah. There you go. Number two in the AFC. Yeah. There you go, dude. All right, dude. Adidas. Adidas. We'll see. Pirate. Adidas we'll see. Too. It's better Pirate. not making the playoffs. Goddamn well, right. I agree. Colts are sitting right there. I got a lot of tweets from people in Massachusetts saying, yeah, we lost by 30. Fuck off. You weren't even in the dance. <laughs> You're right. You're 100% right. Hey, Connor, you better pin a letter to, to Kraft, too. All right, pin one of those little cute letters to Robert Kraft, too. Oh, yeah, dear. Oh, yeah. yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. You're right, D-Butt. We got to hold yeah. his feet to the fire a little bit. He's he's expecting all this accountability from Jim Irsay, who right. answered, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Jim wrote his own letter back, and then he cut a promo in front of a plane. <laughs> yeah. He said, hey, Connor, listen, I see your little tweets. All right, pal, yeah. as a member of Indianapolis. What are the Patriots saying? Oh, we're we'll working the offseason. Uh, the Patriots started two and four and they had a rookie quarterback and went to the playoffs. I'm not that well, worried. Well, we started about one and five. Boys. We had Carson Wentz. So. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, exactly. Tomato, tomato. Hey, Josh Allen, by the way, when you watch him, don't you just think, like, oh, some of these plays are reminiscent of Carson? And then at the end, instead of two sprains, it's like a lollipop touchdown on it. <laughs> You know what I mean, D, D? But it's real. Like you go back two years ago, Josh Allen was still getting better and better and better. You go back two years ago, Carson Wentz was the big guy that was able to move and make plays. This dude's the prototype, D. But this guy's the fucking prototype, I think, right now. 
it, I mean, especially at that part in the country this this time of year. Like this, I know a lot of people are saying, "Hey, let's put Josh Allen in the dome, or let's do it, or every team should." Like this is that's the reason you want a quarterback like that. Like Mac Jones looked completely uncomfortable out Dude. of place in that stadium. He had and, that scuba suit oh, on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Bill And that, that matters too. That matters. As a defensive player, you know, everybody's cold, but you know, you you watch Tom Brady, you watch Aaron Rodgers when he's out there with a the turtleneck. Like those guys look cool as a cucumber. <laughs> like he this guy, like he looked like damn, don't and when he got hit, he was laying on the ground like Ah, like it's like you gotta have some. You gotta at least fake it. Man. He got the scuba suit from Brady. That that's what Brady does. Brady, Come on, Brady doesn't wear that thing. Yeah, all he does. Yeah, 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 he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, Brady Brady we'll we'll see it in Lambo in two yeah, weeks. Just his yeah, eyes he shot. does. Well, the thing about it is he's won seven Super Bowls. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's just what he's allowed to do. He's on the sideline looking at his breath and shit. Like that was fun. Come on, man. Come on, man. Time to smoke and fake cigarettes. That was cool. Oh, I'd be doing it too. I mean, it was pretty cold up there. Give him a break. No, we are Give him a break. He's People a rookie. Saying, He's a rookie. He's got time. This will be a part of the whole documentary. You know, we had to lose this game to kind of build, yeah. to go forward. Yeah. It'll be a whole thing. But that Josh Allen led Bills team looks like they are going to be good for some time, which is a shame for also the Dolphins. I mean, the right. Dolphins are also in their That's right. division over there. And they ain't even Power Raider or Adidas. They're third in the division. All in sport. All sport. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah all, all sport. Body so, armor. That's tough. <laughs> body armor's wrong. Body armor's, body armor's a bit new. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So? AJ, you had a share of body armor, I assume? They just asked every person that played football and got drafted in the first round if they wanted to share of that, right? I, I wish. Didn't Kobe Bryant make like 150 mil off of that? Yeah. Yeah. He, made, he made a grip. Yeah. He made a lot of money. I think he made more off the body armor dude than he did like on the court or something like that. And that was only probably one of what for Kobe yeah. business yeah. Mm -hmm. Several. Rest in peace, dude. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Kobe. Rest in peace, Kobe. Tom Brady ain't losing, huh? We're just bringing up the Mamba mentality. Like, I mean, Tom Brady against the Eagles yesterday was maybe one of the biggest layups of all time. Maybe, maybe he just passed the ball to Scotty Miller one last yeah. time. Go ahead. Seven Tom. seas. I right, wasted folks' time. Who? Both the seven seas. Steelers. Whoa. Eagles. Come on, man. Should have gave him a bye week. All right, let's Wait, talk about God. the Steelers team. Tell him, go ahead, pal. That was the Colts' foot fault, D. But um, Very speaking true. of the last time the Chiefs played a real D or a real offense, they gave up thirty-one. Um, do you think they Chiefs defense can hold up against the Bills at all? You know, it's early right now, but I saw the Bills are dogs. I'm taking the Bills. Fuck yeah. I'm taking the Bills in that game wow. because of the defense. You know, you got two all pros and safeties. You got guys up front that get after it. And then Josh Allen and, and, and Mahomes, I think they'll go back and forth. But that defense for the Bills, I just have more faith in them to make, you know, just one or two more plays uh, down the stretch. But, uh, I, I mean, I can't. I can't wait for that game. Yeah. I can't wait for this weekend as well. And every time I get a chance to chat with you, I get excited, D-Butt, because your big old brain is always on display. Who do you got tonight, Cardinals, Rams? I got Cardinals. Cardinals on the road, man. Rams uh, don't got a ton of faith. I don't have a lot of faith in either of these quarterbacks, honestly, this point of the year. But Stafford, man, um, you know, he's, he's been giving that, giving that ball away late in the year. And de defensively. Rams down, both starting safeties. Weddle, Eric Weddle should get a lot of burn out there tonight. Oh, yeah. But um, last week, they were terrible in, in situational football on the defensive side of the ball. And then Sean McVay lost faith in Stafford late. He didn't even try to get the first down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's embarrassing. for are just saving him for the playoffs. No, yeah, they were at the pool. Yeah. Sean McVay had a shirt yeah. off yeah. with the dog. Yeah. And Matthew Stafford was in the pool. Yeah. Like, hey, let's hey, bust out all this. That shit goes south real quick when you put all the chips in. You no. get Vaughn, Odell, and you go one and done in the playoffs, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> JJ Watts back too. Hey, he great video today. Did you see that? I, I saw the video, but he, I, I, we'll see him tonight. He's going to be the upstage his brother too. Well, yeah, TJ oh, exactly, and he'll be. You guys know like I know, he'll be fresh, ready to go against that interior line. What does that ready mean? What does that mean? What, what does that mean? He'll be right. fresh. We hey, know he works his ass off. He'll be ready. He's been, <laughs> he's been gnawing at the bit. Can't Hell wait. Yeah. As do you, ladies and gentlemen, host of the Man of Man podcast and everything, DB, Darius Butler. Thank you, Darius. Yeah. All right, let's get to a break. What did that mean? That you know uh, he'll be fresh. You know what, what does that mean? You know talking about laying in the frozen pond or what? Uh, probably, yeah, like this with his brother, TJ. He's talking self-handicapping, I think. Hey, watching Hank think oh. that he hit for like plus 12 or 13,000 last night <laughs> with the TJ Watt first score, only for it to be De uh, Derek, Derek Watt. Yeah. <laughs> That was heartbreaker. <laughs> Hank, I'm sorry that happened, dude. You deserve to win that, just like Scotty Miller could have got another fucking yard. Damn, Damn man. Man.
Scotty Miller was trending yesterday. Yeah, I know. I uh, yeah, I know. Ike Scott. I wonder if he checked. No, like, oh, I must, fuck no. him, Scotty. Yeah. A little bit better balance, Scotty. You know, yeah. this dude's unbelievable at Gunner. Unfucking believable at Gunner. Runs a four-two. I would love to have that guy Gunner on a football team. I'm punting right to the little white lightning out there. But somehow somebody just accidentally hits him and he falls anywhere close to less than nine yards. Even though the ref fucked him over, it's bullshit. Scotty should have got 14 to 15 yards on that play. You think you checked Twitter like, oh, people must have been he really impressed with my game. So Scotty liked a bunch of the tweets that I said, attaboy, Scotty, attaboy, yeah. Scotty. So I think, I think Scotty did end up getting uh, caught up on the whole situation. Sure. Oh, wait, fuck you, Scotty. No, yeah, yeah. What the- Scotty doesn't deserve that. He had a great game. That's Scotty on us. Know. We don't hold this against Scotty. No. no. We hold it against the ref that's spotted it wrong. We're back in four minutes with some phone calls on a five energy phone line. Then in the after hours program, we'll go through all the overreaction tweets on Twitter. Can't wait for that and more. This is the Pat McAfee show. Overreaction Monday. Oh yeah. Not overrated takes Monday. Oh, maybe, my hey, maybe in the off season though. We're back in four. <laughs> Cheers. So Tom Brady. Earlier in the season, did the same game parlay, took two kneel downs at the end of the fucking game, and lost us a plus like 700 parlay or something. 40,000 people were on. Okay? Then Michael Pittman Jr. got tripped up by his shoestrings. He was wide open. I was there. It was against the Jets on Thursday night. I was there. I seen it. Gets tri- tripped up. Doesn't hit his over. And here we are on the same game parlay holiday. Now I know. Scoot, scoot, Scotty Miller. It was a bad spot by the ref. Only gets eight yards when we need eight and a half. But on the NFL site, it says one catch for nine yards. And on the ESPN site, it says one catch for nine yards. Because that, that, they saw the same thing me and Val saw. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. That's what that. <laughs> hey, this was supposed to be a celebratory beer. Tell them. But instead, you gotta drink away our sorrows, I guess. Even though two sites have them at nine yards. So did we win? Maybe this is a celebratory. Right now, I feel a bit conflicted all of a sudden. Val's not happy. Chuck's not happy. Todd Bowles is happy. They win. They cover by two and a half. Mike Evans gets a touchdown. Gronk gets a touchdown. But of course. That's tough, dude. That's we were supposed to hit him for ten milli. A milli, 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 a milli. Fuck, dude. What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, I never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. And, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. You don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? So when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make. <laughs> I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did you, uh, you start know, self-cheersing? When did you start self-cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting out, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember, and it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, and people always get us confused. They'll say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. No, oh, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on Overreaction Monday, January 17th, 2022. All the boys are here. AJ Hawk is live. a boy, AJ. Hey, hey, AJ. AJ. What do you figure it out, AJ? Let's go to the phones on the 5 Energy phone line, one 833 4 McAfee. Go to 5 energycom Use promo code McAfee to get 10% off your order of any of the beautiful original flavors that 5 Energy has. Ain't that right, AJ? Oh, yeah. 15 uh, summer flavors are still around, aren't they? All right, we, we do appreciate everything 5 Hour Energy does. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to spit on them like AJ Hawk is yeah. trying to do right now. They are not just summer flavors. They are original flavors, and they are delightful, and will get you from A to B, B being 5 Hours of Energy. Oh, yeah. All right. The aftertaste changes. It does. Yeah. That's what it is, because they're shots, you know? So the original 5 Hour Energy took the shot. The afterwards was like, oh, yeah. all right, but it's going to give me a lot of energy. The aftertaste now with the cherry and the watermelon, watermelon yeah. and tropical, it's all very Ooh. delicious. Go to 5HourEnergy.com. Use promo code McAfee. Let's go to Zach in Moose Jaw, Connecticut. Nice. Oh. No, Canada. Canada. Got to be Canada. Not Connecticut. That's on me. What's up, Zach? Ah, boys, what the fuck is going on? Hey, just, just hanging out, man. What's going on with you, dude? No, much. Just got COVID today. We're just living the dream here. Oh, no. no. Man, I thought you guys were allowed to leave your houses. Did COVID just go door to door like fucking Santa Claus, dude? Nice it's fucking you. knocking on each door. It's coming for us, I tell you. Uh, tell your neighbor not to answer the door there, eh? Hey? I mean, fucking COVID's coming through. You okay? Your body feel good? Yeah, we're surviving. We're getting through. Hey, okay. We like yeah, that. Yeah, baby. Good luck out there, Zach. What do you want to talk about, pal? All right. Mr. Mike McCarthy, is he the biggest clown of all for admitting that that QB draw was a good play? Okay, all right. I mean, any any answer they were to give about that particular play call would be a wrong one because of how terrible it ended up. And hindsight tells us that it was a terrible decision, bad decision. Even if they get that snap off and run a play as opposed to just spiking the ball, I mean, it's probably going to be two or three offsides. I mean, it was an absolute ca uh, catastrophe at the end of the game. That's how the Cowboys season ended. It was a shame for sure. What do you think Big Mike's saying to the team or to Jer right now, AJ? Oh, man. I bet he is almost at a loss for words. And did you guys read over the pool reporter who got to question, I think, Walt Anderson, who was on that crew? No. What happened? Walt Anderson. Yeah, I mean, is they, you know, one pool reporter is allowed to ask the officials something, and they talked about, could you review that and go to New York, all this stuff. And I guess technically they could have sent that back, but he didn't because he called the end of the game. Oh, so... It wasn't a very good answer he gave. Well, that is just the beginning of bad answers that Walt Anderson gave because the erroneous whistleblower... Remember, Walt Anderson said publicly after the game, with all of us having ears and eyes, all of us... Well, not, sorry, not everybody. Not everybody. Hey, I'm sorry. It wasn't Walt then. This, I'm not talking to Walt. Walt was from that game, the Bengals game, right? Yeah, Walt was from the Bengals game where the refs had a, a discussion. They said the whistle wasn't until after the ball was caught, so it wasn't that big of a deal. It was like, well, that's fucking wrong. That's been wrong. <laughs> Just state that uh, it was a erroneous whistle, and we all agreed that it didn't change the outcome of the play, so fucking move on. That would have been a much better answer, I think, than what they gave, but classic NFL officiating kind of dropping the ball. Let's go to Ethan in New York. What's going on, Ethan? Shout out to New York being on FanDuel. Shout out to the Super Boost hitting for the first time in New York's history. Yeah. We appreciate you. What's going on, Ethan? Hey, Pat. Uh, I was just watching earlier. Um, I really like your uh, segment with Kay Adams, and she obviously talks about how she's going to be a free agent in May, and I was wondering if if there's any thought there about throwing her a bag and bringing her to, uh, onto the show permanently? Ethan, great question. I don't know if we'll be able to afford what Kay Adams is going to command in the in the off season. Mm -hmm. She has done a great job hosting Good Morning Football that is watched by everybody. I'm excited for her free agency. And maybe we'll dabble in there. I don't know how. I don't know how we would with her or anybody else that is going to potentially be up. But we will try to grow the show to make it better. Speaking of better show, Mad Dog is on the other side. He'll be better than us. Cheers. I missed it. I think it went off and Mad Dog's on the other side. Bam. Perfect. Yeah, still, still hit it. That whole thing is interesting. Okay, I don't know if now is the time to have this conversation because it is overreaction Monday. There's a lot of football to talk about that, boy, Foxy. But whenever you add people to the mix, it's like, I don't know if I'm smart enough to to make them be an actual additive to the show or the business, if that makes sense. I've, I've seen everybody else, like, get money and then they just kind of hire a bunch of people and then I don't know how you make everybody... I don't know. It's an interesting you thing. Think, you don't think Kay will want to move to Indianapolis from New York City and hang out with the boys every morning? <laughs> yeah. Well, just not just Kay, by the way. There's a bunch of people that are potentially free agents, and 
uh, friends of ours that you could stop going in that. You guys are gonna have to stop dumping in that girl's bathroom. <laughs> That would stink. I we can't get you to stop pissing all that? over the floor. That'd be great, too. I got my own bathroom. You guys are yeah, pooping in the not. women's room? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, it's the dumper room. Yeah. And Come we on. cannot change the that. They, they, they let me know so. that. The Quickly. men's bathroom is a barnyard. I can't yeah. take a shit in there. I'll puke. What's your I guys' can't... problem? We're building it's this brand terrible. new place. You guys just going to treat it like shit like you guys have treated this place? Oh, what wow. are you talking about, Mr. Piss all over the floor every time you come down? I never do that. One reason I knew that, I said, why do you guys have a women's bathroom? He uses that. I'm like, oh, that's where we don't. Okay, I'm never going you to scumbags. Scumbags. Have to do it. Have to do Sorry. it. Just absolutely have to do it. That thing, I mean, it's like that's like Yugoslavia, war torn Yugoslavia, <laughs> that men's bathroom. You look at that toilet, you don't want anything to do with that. You go into the window. Who created bathroom. that? Uh, well, someone was puking there's one out of the person who uses that uh, for number two, and you could guess why we don't. The rest of us don't. Tony. Zito, I appreciate you. Nick does too, first and foremost. No, <laughs> Nick does right. not. All right, why don't you guys do your dump? You know, dump in wherever the hell you want, but let's have a little respect for the office, please. Sure. Absolutely. I'm excited for new bathrooms that have been unsoiled. Too. Wow. I'm excited for what? Oh, We're going to have to have security yeah. in there? Like somebody what? in the fucking bathroom, like selling like Tic Tacs and, and mouthwash and also, oh. hey, don't fucking ruin our entire office. You know, treat this place like it's home. Well, it's not like it's his. I mean, it just, you go in there and the smell just over, I mean, you can't control that. It just yeah. overtakes you and then you walk in there and you need oh, a so hazmat. Oh, it's the exhaust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Almost exactly. passed I, out. I can't put a hazmat suit on every time <laughs> I need to take a shit because I got, my guts are all fucked up, you know, yeah. and then I mean, a hazmat suit all day. Hey, thanks for battling through to work here, honestly. <laughs> you bet. Let's go to the phones. How are there pubes on the floor below the urinal is my question. That still blows my mind. Yeah, I don't get that either. What? I, don't I was know. taking I... a leak the other, last time I was there. Taking a leak, and there's just like... And you're peeing under the urinal? Why are you even... <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just looking <laughs> so around. Did pee on and the like, floors. <laughs> these things are like... There's hair like growing into the ground. What you guys deal? Didn't dirt. we just have a cleaner here like yeah, what, a week and a half, two no, weeks it ago? Doesn't look like it's that. gorgeous now, yeah. yeah. It's asinine, Pat. It's like someone shaves their pubes, leaves them in their <laughs> yep. underwear, and then dumps them out when they, walk, yeah. when they take a piss. It's you guys wild. Need to That's what up. I don't understand. You guys I don't understand why is their hair falling out. Hey, you guys need to tighten up. You hear me? I got a long tighten arm, up. so. I don't ever use that bathroom. It's gross. But if I need to go take a little peek see on the disgusting operation that you guys are running with your undergarments here, this, is, this needs to be talked about. Don't be pooping on the floor. Don't Can't do that. Don't be sharing your pubes all over the place. No. You pee in the goddamn urinal, not on the goddamn floor, AJ. And everybody needs to do a little bit more for the place that they call home. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah, groom your nuts, What's boys. That? One time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the lava are. I just don't know how hair comes off of your body onto the urinal. Well, I don't know. Did you bring a bag of your pubes like you brought that bag of piss and dumped it everywhere? I, mean, I don't know why you're trying to exonerate Fuck. yourself. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of crooked fingers being pointed right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, I brought a couple bags of piss with me to dump it <laughs> yeah, around. You did. That's what God. you did the first time, right? Yeah. When yeah. I was in the yeah. came back, there was just pee everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was It was like an IV bag. What did it's happen so to false. that? Do we? That so actually false. happened. It was that we know what happened. happened. People think that we're lying whenever we say that. Somebody brought bags of pee in here and just spread it all over the mm -hmm. men's room. Yeah. I had to answer that question. That's something I had to deal with. I, like, News to me. Is that happening in business school? Hey, at some point, you're going to walk into your office and somebody's going to say... So we believe somebody brought a bag of piss in here and put it on the bathroom floor. I'm like, who? We know everybody that comes in. Well, we had a couple of people that are not regulars that did stop by and this happened when they were here and nobody else was here. I'm like, who are they? AJ Hawk and one other person. Uh -huh. So unless the boys try to frame you and that one other person, it does believe like a lot of roads, at least half of them are leading right to Ohio as the bag of piss bandit. Who's that other person? Don't yeah, they don't well, deserve to be out on the no. show. No. How do you think okay, he potty trained do I, do I? Axel? He's had him pissing in shopping bags for weeks, <laughs> sitting in the back of his car. His truck drives him in here, throws him all over the place like water balloons. No, what's his name? Wonton Don? Yeah. Yep. I watched Donnie uh, sneak a bag of beer in his left bra, bag of beer in his right bra. On the Shark Tank. No, this was, yeah, I don't know. Is that the, the arena he went into? Yeah. Then he, um, he dumped a bunch of booze into a, a baby doll. <laughs> And then he put on an entire wig and he walked in with his baby and then he ripped the head of the baby off and drank it, <laughs> put the baby back in there and then he pulled out a bag of booze oh, yeah. from his left bra and drained that thing. Mm -hmm. And that's how you drink for free at games. Yeah. yeah. Smart. Smart. I, it's, it's time to call it and just put cameras in the bathroom. I'm sick of it. Can't yeah. do it. Yeah, that's... Can't, that's illegal, I think. That's fine. If we sign off on it's it. It's not, actually. Can we sign waivers? Yeah. Yeah, waivers is where it's at. <laughs> Zeet. I'm sure somebody's probably already snuck a few in there. No. What? What do you got? Bags of piss? AJ. 
cameras, probably. Did you? What? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. What is no, your I didn't. Hey, Jay. Let's go to Anthony in Florida. What's Connor's going on? I was asking for him. <laughs> uh, we're, not, we're not playing cameras in the bathroom, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sick that's of the that's problem. illegal, man. And, and start illegal. peeing <laughs> and pooping into proper yeah. places. Yes. All of you. Yes. Including you. Hey, I have great aim. No, you don't. That was not me. I did not pee no, all over those fingers. Let's go to Anthony in Florida. What's going on, Anthony? <laughs> Boys, I'm here to solve the dilemma of the piss in the bathroom. Clearly, we need to hire an investigator to come through and sit down through all day. Business one-on-one. Anywho, with baseball going, going on to? strike, Pat, and hey, I can, I can make my way down up there. But with baseball going on strike, <laughs> and you being a professional, Give me address. are you going to are you, <laughs> are you going to be like the replacement to come and play some baseball? Hey, I appreciate that. Good question, Anthony. Let's go to Devin in Indiana. What's going on, Devin? <laughs> hey, Pat, how we doing, boys? Keep it moving. Moving. <laughs> hey, you know, I got a little bit of overreaction Monday here. I think this is pretty appropriate. Okay. All right, so, sorry for the pause there. Dramatic. No, no, it's okay. It's our fault, style. actually. We should got better. No, 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 no. You guys are perfect, so thanks for no, having no, me. No, 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 you're anyway, perfect. Man. You. You, dude. Yeah. Uh, no. All right, that's a yeah. good call, man. You. All right. <laughs> All right, so I'm to... overreacting. Here we go. All right, the Green Bay Packers are about to be Super Bowl champions again for the fifth time, for the 14th time altogether. All we're right. going to defeat the Kansas City Chiefs. Woo. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to get revenge on the San Francisco 49ers for what? beating us in the 2019 NFC Championship game. What? We're going to get revenge on Tom Brady and the Buccaneers for beating us last year in the NFC Championship game. What? Do you really think Aaron Rodgers is about to lose back-to-back NFC Championship games at Lambeau Field? Oh, Not I, I says me. And what? we're going to dethrone what? the Chiefs in the Super Bowl and remind everybody who the true GOAT greatest of, of all-time quarterback is, Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Four time NFL MVP. I'm saying it, manifesting it. Go, Pat, go, baby. Hey, Devin, we appreciate that promo. There's a couple things. The Chiefs aren't the current champs, so you wouldn't be dethroning them. You dethroned the champions the week before as you got your vengeance for losing the NFC Championship last year against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But I like where your head's at. A lot of people are feeling that way. Hey, that's how a lot of people are feeling about the Packers because their team, if you watch this past weekend, it seemed to be pretty obvious on which teams are going to be able to go and who isn't. The Packers have been playing like that for the last like 10 weeks, 11 weeks straight. We'll see, though. I would imagine this week before the game, there's going to be a lot of the San Francisco 49ers or the trendy pay. I, I would guess a lot of people are going to be picking the Niners to beat the Packers, but we'll see. you got to beat good teams to go to the Super Bowl. I'm very confident in the Packers still. Let's go to Chris in Virginia. What's going on, Chris? Hey, Pat, I don't want to overreact, but Alex Kemp deserves to never officiate a game in the NFL ever again. Uh, he brutally fucked the Cowboys yesterday. Um, I don't think that the guy who's supposed to be spotting the ball needs to be 30 yards down the field and need to be on a dead sprint with less than 20 seconds left on the clock. Valid. Uh, disappointed Cowboys fan. Uh, another year, but uh, hopefully get to see uh, Raji go out on top this year. I like that. Chris says, listen. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. We stink again. We lose. But this ref deserves a little bit more shit for being the furthest away from the ball out of every single ref on the field at the time. How does that happen? What does the ump have? Is he lined up behind the quarterback under two minutes back to the left? Is that why he's in there? And how come he is further back than the head ref, which seems to be further down the field than him, AJ, you think? uh, My question is, why is this dude... So he's 20 yards behind the ball, at least right here. So he's probably 25 right when the play ended. Why? What's he doing back there in case Dak throws a pick six? You can be in position. Like, what are you doing way back there? I don't know. There's an entire protocol and process. I assume that he was in the right spot. It's just a terrible. It's just not an efficient way to do it. Whether the the Cowboys, the call, you can argue that. Yeah, absolutely. The the call was bizarre how they handled it didn't give the ball to the ref but also like this is a very inefficient way to go about it i agree i concur and this guy while dak was running this play the entire time he was running oh fuck 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 spot the ball twice three times while he's putting it down there I mean, what a nightmare. In the process, remember, the head ref has to watch what? He watches the quarterback. He watches around the quarterback. Then once the ball is released, he watches the quarterback. Then he watches something else. The ump is supposed to watch something. And then they're supposed to watch something. The side judge does their thing. Back judge. They all have their own little rules in process. I, I don't know why that guy was the furthest away from the goddamn ball at the time. He must have been checking out something pretty sweet. 
I mean, what was he watching on the jumbotron? Was he trying to get a better angle or something? I'm not 100. Just sure. popped up. That's where he's supposed to be standing to the left, right there, a little bit. Yeah, and this changed because they used to be back in the middle there, right. right by where the middle linebacker was. But people were too, uh, you know, a little bit pissed off about it. So he goes there. He'd be closer than the. Uh, head ref, it does appear. Once the play happens, he did not move from that spot. No, he was keeping his eye on something. There was yeah. something popping off there. And what about the line judge? Can't the can't you toss the ball to the line judge and have him spot it? No, it's always the ump. Has to be the yeah. Okay. That's who you're trying to find. Boom, boom. Try to find the ump. That's the whole thing. Especially in that situation, though, the ump needs to know. Okay, they're going to try to clock this at some point. I need to make sure I hover a little closer than normal. Well. Once again, as he's watching Dak run, uh, 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 that, that happens, I assume. Actually, you know what? It probably took him by surprise so much as the <laughs> official. He's like, they're not running. The, there's, obviously, they're going to throw the ball. The it ball. probably what? took him a minute. It took him a second to realize they're <laughs> oh, running. Oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome. Oh, no. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Okay, fuck, shit. His oh, mic. Is he mic'd fuck up? Out of my way. We, it's over. we need his mic. I want to see him mic'd up. I'm going to get blamed for this. And the other refs go, no, you, you did your job. Uh, I'm going to get blamed for this. No, no, oh, no, you no, did everything you could. Let's just get off this field. And as he's jogging off the field, I'm going to get blamed for this. The other refs are like, no. And then bottles are landing. Yeah. Oh, no, those are for me. Yeah, they are, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this Keep is your, head your down. fault. This is your fault. That was awesome. What a scene, dude. And you think Dak gets in trouble? I know that he said whatever. They were talking about people throwing stuff. And they said, oh, they're throwing at the officials, too. And he said, good for them, I think. But yeah, something... Um, uh, or that's credit, good to, or credit to them. Credit to them yeah. then. Yeah, because he gave. Will he get fined for that? Who knows? Who cares? He's got plenty of money. I mean, yeah. probably. I know he's got money. I'm just saying, if are they that petty? Will they'll that they will fine him for that? I assume he'll hear from somebody, you know, about it. In in that letter that he hears from the NFL, it'll say, since you decided to run this long and slide with this much time left, it actually put the ref in a terrible position, especially because you refused to hand the ball to him like you're supposed to do it. You handed it to your center. Since when does the center spot the ball, Deck? We'll tell you, never. Then you go into your press conference afterwards and say, good on the Cowboys for uh, the Cowboys fans for threatening to hurt that ref. Well, maybe if you didn't fuck up, Deck, the refs wouldn't even be in that position. And for that, we are fining you. $400,000. <laughs> Imagine if that's how the NFL wrote its letter to Dak. That'd be. It said they practiced this well, over and over again. What you well. also need, what, part of the thing that when you practice that, okay, hey, we're going to sprint up. Let's make sure we get the ball to the, the umpire. You also probably need to practice having your like center and guard be aware of where he's at and try to spread out and give him some space so he can slide through a gap. Did he, did he spot it or hand it to the center? I forget. I think he handed it to the center. Hand it. Uh, I thought he spotted it. I thought he put it down. And then the center ran up, put his hand on it, then... And then the ref comes, get the fuck out yeah. of the way. I was three yards away. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Where is it? Here, 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 here. Fuck it. Oh, no, this is my fault. <laughs> <laughs> what a moment, man. That's, that's how the Cowboys season ends. All that hope, all that promise ends in the most embarrassing fashion of time mismanagement, which has been a problem all season long. Mm -hmm. So... This is just like when Mad Hatter was down there at LSU. Yeah. yeah. Every single game, he'd fuck up time management somehow. Mm -hmm. It's like, why is he calling timeout? Why is he not calling timeout? And then ultimately, in the end, something would happen. They'd lose because of time management. And he'd be like, oh, you know, that's just the way the ball goes sometimes. It's <laughs> like, no. Some people just stink at managing situations clockwise, and you need to get better. I don't know how Jerry's going to address that in the offseason. I don't know what Big Mike's going to do, but I'm sure he's rolling out the watermelons right now to get everybody going mm -hmm. for the offseason to get better. You think Mike's sleeping right now? You think Big Mike's taking a, a nap or a snooze until he gets that thing figured out? I do not think so. I think Big Mike has enough anger in him, and he's so pissed off and, and mad that they're not still playing. I don't know if he's going to sleep for a while. You think we'll ever get him on this show? Maybe. That'd be nice. We should. I don't know. You think, should I reach out to him now? Hey, Coach, <laughs> let's, come talk. let's go yeah. recap the season. Why don't we? <laughs> Hey, tell him we just want to talk to him. That's all. I okay. bet he He'll is. get back to me like three months. Tell him we don't want to talk football. We just want to talk yeah. Big Mike. Yeah, I bet he okay. is boozed up right now. Talk Greenfield. You think him and Jerry are out there on that? Oh, not Jerry. No, I doubt Jerry was like, hey, Big Mike, let's go on my boat. I bet Big Mike's probably in like an Arby's parking lot hammering <laughs> back shots of Jack. Big Mike's out there on a... A tiny little fishing boat on a Monongahela in uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Just hammering icy lights in between the ice. Yeah, getting wrecked. I mean, they they made a lot, a lot of time management errors all season. Mm -hmm. And we pointed it out every single week. It was like, Dallas needs to figure out what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Because they can't do that in games that matter. Mm -hmm. 
and it turns out it's the end of their season. That's just like turnovers and missed throws. In the playoffs, all those things are magnified. Like somebody dropped the ball, and it can't do that in the playoffs. Can't can't drop a ball in the playoffs. Oh, can't overthrow somebody in the playoffs. Everything matters. But then you go back to the MC Championship game last year. Tom Brady threw three picks, and they won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. 14 penalties. So hindsight always ends up being the Hey, Raiders. also, though, hey, with the Cowboys, too, what if they lose Kellen Moore and Dan Quinn, both of their coordinators? I don't know if Kellen Moore is necessarily on the hot seat of getting hired anymore after <laughs> – <laughs> how that thing ended last night, I would assume. But does one game affect it, though? That always does happen, though, where these guys are big-time candidates to get an interview, and then their season ends, and, uh, you know, it doesn't look good for them. Like, do they do those guys end up getting hired? Like, I don't know. We'd have to go back and look. Yeah, and I wonder, you know, is somebody who's interviewing Kellen Moore going, so who called the uh, last play? Is that you, Big Mike, who thought that was the right thing? And Kellen's like, well, I'm a big Mike. For yeah. Sure. yeah. I told him, I told yeah, him, we, yeah, for real. I told him we didn't have enough time. I said we couldn't do that. He said, no, we practiced down there. Let's go ahead and run it. And it didn't work out. So I was right all along, just like I thought, yeah. just like I'll be for you. Uh, I'm the right candidate in there. There's only 32 jobs. I don't know how you don't get judged upon your most recent work with the most eyes on you. But Dan Quinn's probably in a spot where he could take any job he wants right now. Yeah, because it wasn't just that game, right? The whole, like, kind of the back half of the yeah. season, it was the Cowboys' defense that really kind of propelled them and, like, oh, this team could go on a run, and their offense was very inconsistent. Shit. Shit. What the hell does Big Mike, like, do? Yeah, I don't know, because he's taking a lot of heat for this play call, and it's like we didn't give him any credit for any of the play he's calls. He's got a play sheet. He's got the play sheet in front of him. And he hits the watermelons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. does hit. So... Does he just like watch the game and do pump ups with each Well, and then he told the ref too, it's I'm fucking looking right down there. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, I mean, said, he, he does talk to the ref. I think that's why. Oh, I actually <laughs> saw him do it in the video because uh, Trent with his left foot yeah. was getting mm -hmm. Gregory to jump. And Tony Romo was like, he needs to be looking at the ball and not the player. It's like, oh, Tony's never talked to a defensive end before. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome because they are keying the tackle. And, uh, you know, I used to watch Robert Mathis and Dwight Freeney work and John Tierlink, rest in peace, is their coach. And it was amazing. Like, I, I won't give away too much of their tricks, but it, there's parts of the body that if the body moves for the tackle, that means the ball has already been snapped and you're before the ball, you're before the head. It's either a hip or a knee move or something like that. And old Trent, I mean, he moved his ankle like twice. Oh, like yeah. Pretty big, almost like fishing for it. And then bang, gets it offsides. Uh, extend the drive, and then Big Mike's over there. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you fucking kidding me? And then that just got added into the refs having a terrible weekend conversation. And you know these guys won't ref. They won't ref anymore this off season. It's like, uh, but they'll be back week one. Yeah. Hey, don't yeah. you worry. They need to Ready talk to though. Don't you think they need to talk about the fact that these guys get put on like all star crews for the playoffs and they're not with their normal crew? So you have this crew you travel, you do the whole season with, and then they pick and choose who they want and put them together for the playoffs. Well, and how do they pick any all stars yeah. after the yeah. season we watched? You know, it's like, oh, you don't suck as bad. You seem to be okay. You're actually legit, but we're going to put you with a bunch of shit fucks so you can off weigh it a little bit. That, that whole system needs to be figured out. And I know whenever you present zero alternatives, you are just a, a part of the problem. You know, if you say, hey, this is wrong, but you don't, like, build up an alternate choice that would be much better. It's one alternate choice I gave you. Keep them to keep their crews together for the playoffs, and the best crews get playoff games. You don't pay, you don't handpick, like, officials from different crew. Yeah, but I don't know if they had enough crews for enough games. Yeah. You know, for the off season that was, especially this season. I think the answer is get a pipeline, former players, Put them through an academy, put them through a school, do whatever. You got a lot of former players that aren't doing great. Okay, I think that is very well known and documented by all the people that like to dance on the graves of professional athletes failing after they retire. Oh, these dudes don't know how to do this. They don't know how to live. They're so used to being coddled. Okay, well, let's put them on a pipeline. Guys that have been on the field, guys that don't have much going on. It's going to be tough to get them to say yes to being a ref because a lot of us, and I don't want to pay them. You have to pay them very good. Well, it's like a university. I think you pay them to go to the university to learn it. I think you get a bunch of people. Then you start getting turnover of these refs that understand the game the modern day and also give them a technology like kind of um a, a, a parachute 
almost. That replay assist thing was awesome. And it, we only saw it in spurts. Like, allow them to be able to make a mistake, make a call, make a mistake, and then let somebody go in and be like, uh, actually, in 4K, we saw you were wrong. Just pick it up and move along. Hey, sorry about that. We will move forward. I think that is how you can kind of replace the bullshit arrogance. We don't need any help from anybody else generation of refs into a modern one that utilizes all the technology advances to better the game, speeding up the game, and make it a better quality for everybody that potentially is gambling on it or living and dying by every decision that's being made. Yeah, and it's man, especially the rest of this uh, postseason. Can you imagine being any ref that moving forward on a crew like those guys have to be just on edge at all times? Especially if the game, like man, we just want blowouts. Like we only want to ref blowouts. We don't want any close games. We don't want anything to come down to us. Hey, let's get some calls in here early to make sure this thing's a blowout <laughs> <laughs> for real. All right, like, I don't want that pressure. Like the NHL refs are awesome. They talk, they have moxie, they have confidence. They fuck up, it's okay because they're like, hey, we missed one, boys, we'll get you back, we'll get you back, we'll get <laughs> yeah. you back, and they just kind of move along. And I know there's probably NHL fans that are like, nah, these refs stink over here. But I think as a whole from professional sports, the hockey refs have the most moxie, have the most like common sense it feels like, and they understand the flow of a game and how things happen. I think it's a, it's a huge asset to the NHL. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the hardcore hockey fans, like you say, don't necessarily agree, but I don't think they're getting the full perspective of how bad it is in the other avenues, like the NFL refs. It's just like that no-nonsense, like, oh, I'm right, you're wrong. There's no possible way uh, a player could be right. The referee has to be right. The NHL takes a lot of time to review a lot of different things. They, they huddle up a lot. They do that a lot, and we see that starting to happen a little bit more now. It seems like in the NFL we're getting more – ref crews kind of huddling up to try and get some things right so i mean there's progress right in some small increments but it seems like there's still a lot of overall fuck up so whenever we talked to mike Pereira, we said hey is this normal or is this every year because at the beginning of the season the first nine weeks it was like ref stink ref stink yeah. ref stink ref stink ref stink and it's just every year i think is the problem will it ever get to a point where we think yeah it's good Probably not, huh? No, no, no. No. Unless they use the replay assist. Like, I think that's why it's so frustrating because they have that We saw the XFL. Yeah, we see it being used in the XFL. We see when they just make these, like, calls on second down. Like, even the Kittle yesterday, Kittle had that incomplete pass, but he kind of acted like he caught it. Then he fumbles. Cowboys get it. Instead of, like, doing this whole song and dance, they're like, no, it was actually an incomplete pass. Like, let's just keep it moving. And because they don't do that on every play when it is, like, 50-50, it, it just – pisses me off because they can if they want to but they choose not to yeah we're not we're, we can bitch about it until no taunting penalties yesterday right until the cows it's awesome. all weekend i don't think so until the cows come out that's right oh. these guys ba stopped it ba stopped a ta taunting call didn't he yeah. we got old buddy back how about him just smacking a guy right in the head yeah that what was, was that awesome. all about what is that <laughs> I, I haven't reached out to any of my sources in that building down there but what the fuck was that i mean that was an interesting he had a, that guy has a partially torn Achilles yeah. jumping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to say, you know, that's classic be who you can afford to be. Mm -hmm. Like Bruce Arians has a relationship with his players where he could do that and not get fucking, you know, chopped yeah. right in the mouth. There's other coaches that probably don't have a relationship where it's not going to end the exact same way. But I'm excited to get an answer on that. You think B.A. ever gives an answer? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he just he was reacting in the moment. I think he was. That motherfucker's about to get a 15 yard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what are we. He's like, hey, we're disciplined around here. He did coach for Bear Bryant, I believe. Yeah. Or with Bear That's, Bryant. That's how I long. watched that. Did you watch Junction Boys when that came out? That I, Was it a series? I did yeah. not. It was on ESPN Plus, I think. No. Just no. ESPN. Yeah, and it was like probably 20 years ago. It came way out, back so. in the day. Yeah. No, I did not see it. But BA comes from that long lineage of. The I, training camp looked like no joke out there with Bear Bryant. Leave guys for dead. It was it 120 <laughs> degrees too? 100. It was They're like, like oh, falling yeah. on falling on rocks and different random things in their playing field. Like it was serious. Weapon. I'm happy life has evolved. Yeah, <laughs> it's different now. I'm pretty pumped that life has evolved. Last call here before we get the hell out of here on this overreaction Monday. Yeah, get it right. Maybe. What happened? Oh shit, we got to go around Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, let's hit a couple of these. Hey, Bobby in uh, Jersey, what's going on, pal? Hey, boys, how we doing? Keep, Keep it moving. moving. Hey, uh, I don't want to overreact, but, but three, great lead. there's three quarterbacks that are getting paid over $40 million. One, Patrick Mahomes, he threw for 400 yards and five touchdowns. Ooh. Josh Allen threw for 
five touchdowns and 300 yards. Ooh. The last one is Dak Prescott, who didn't do so hot. Only had one touchdown, poor time management. You can't. You got to be more prepared. Got to blame the coaching, but you got to execute better. And now you can't score 17 points at home in a playoff game and expect to win. Okay, Bobby, not with that much of an overreaction. I think a lot of people are saying that $40 million is the new you know, mark of like what mm-hmm. the upper echelon of quarterbacks are getting paid. Patrick Mahomes proved his worth. Josh Allen proved his worth. This guy's saying Dak Prescott needs to figure it out. Ah. It's going to be a long offseason for Dak, Dallas, and everybody involved down there. And it is time for one of my favorite segments of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, we put out a bird call this morning to go ahead and overreact on the internet. Nobody will judge you. Just use the hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact, but... Ty picked a bunch of winners. Let's get to them. Cody Rutherford at CRutherford042. Cody says, hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact, but I feel like the Steelers might be a five-win team for the next couple of years. We stink! Says Cody Rutherford, 042. What's that all about? Ben Roethlisberger's gone? You don't think Dewey Haskins is going to be able to step up, pick it up, and crush it? Is that the problem? Five wins. Tomlin. Yeesh. Yeesh. That's 17-game seasons. Yeah. Wow. They said that this year. They said that last year. They said that the year before. I've been hearing this same old song. But they've had Ben for all those years. Yeah, Yeah. now you got no quarterback of the future. Well, if you want to do that, AJ, but then also on the other side of your mouth, you say that Ben stinks. I mean, come on. Pick a side, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. AJ, do you know the last time the Steelers finished in last place in their division? Go on. 1988. Five wins would probably put you in last place. Yeah. Well, Brian. That's one year after I was born. I mean, that's 33 years ago. That's Jesus holiday. Congrats to you guys. Wow. Congrats to you guys keeping it on float there. The future is very murky for the Pittsburgh Steelers. What are they going to do? Russell Wilson would like to explore his options mm. this offseason, allegedly. Is that team Russ <laughs> or team three or actually Russell Wilson? And is Pittsburgh one of those squads that maybe Russell Wilson and Sierra would say, you know what? We like big cities. We like being incredibly extra in almost everything that we do. Pittsburgh is the perfect place for us, maybe, but there's also other quarterbacks. He's been tweeting about Ben a lot. Yeah. Who? Russ has been tweeting about Ben a lot. Oh, he said, thank you, Seven. Legendary career. Three times now. Did he throw this one up? No. Hey, Uh, how would Pittsburgh feel about Russell Wilson and Sierra? They'd bring him in with open arms. What about they do one of those Halloween party video things? Yeah. Fine with me. Oh, what about uh, he, better have a, he better have a perfect game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He better have a perfect game the next game. But he is a quarterback that immediately dropping him on a team, they get better. Oh, yeah. Pittsburgh has a defense ready to go. They got TJ Watt locked down. Remember, he kicked his agents out of the way and said, I'm going to go sign mm-hmm. this thing. Who knows what Juju future looks like? He said he wants to be there for another four years or whatever the case is. Deontay Johnson got a case of the drops there late, fucked over the hockey talk. Same game parlay. Mm-hmm. Chase Claypool Smart. could be a superstar. You got Najee Harris, which is good. Good news, but a lot of question marks on the offensive line. There's a lot to figure out in Pittsburgh. Cody Rutherford is planning for the worst. Next one, ladies and gentlemen, from Matthew Wilson at Shoe 567. Who? Shoe, shoe, shoe. Hashtag PMS, I don't want to overreact, but New England will not win a Super Bowl this decade. Tom Brady isn't walking through those doors. Belichick is a loser without Tom. Patriot fans need to get comfortable being almost good enough for the next 15 years. Five, six, seven with a goddamn hammer through New England. I I think Tom Brady wanted to win by 30 because he saw the Patriots get beat by 30 Mm -hmm. just the night before. That's why he stayed in the game and continued to do their thing. It is maybe a... A future of mediocrity? Is that what this guy's saying, Boston Connor? Well, I don't know if it's going to be mediocrity, but, I mean, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes are formidable opponents in the AFC going forward, so there is a massive chance we don't sniff a Super Bowl if those two guys are still playing the way they are. And don't forget about Carl Wentz, another $15 million Well, he year. fucking stinks, so there's a difference there. Let's get to the next one here. AJ, don't be smiling at that. This is from Chris Van Handel. Oh. Van Handel. Van Handel. Van Handel. They call me Chris Van Handel, and business I handle, C-V-H. 
Chris VH eight hashtag PMS. I don't want to overreact, but Jalen Hurts stinks at throwing football. Whoa. The Eagles okay. should do whatever they can to get Russ. They can three first round draft picks for the Philadelphia Eagles. And if you looked at the sidebar whenever we started this show, it said the Eagles' future seems like there's going to be a lot of change coming. Did Jalen Hurts prove that he can't be a quarterback that wins in the big games or in the playoffs because he couldn't throw yesterday with like 20, 30 mile an hour wins? Maybe. But if they didn't get a win in the playoffs, everybody was going to immediately think, hey, they got three ones. That could go get one of the big time quarterbacks that's on the market. Jason Kelsey and the boys are ready to go. The defense seems to be able to fly around for whatever reason. Sirianni's got him knocked up, but not knocked down. Maybe they get a big time quarterback that changes things. Do you think that's the case, AJ? I mean, I would imagine if Russell Wilson shows any interest that he would like to go to Philly, I would imagine they would explore their options on how they could get him there. Coach Most Sir- teams would right now. Coach Sirianni, is Russell Wilson a dog? Is that enough for you or no? Well, he does have the dog mentality, but like you mentioned with Jalen, we I he got knocked up. So now I want to see how he reacts you know, over the offseason. We come week one next year. Will he get back up after getting knocked up? I don't know. Like I said, we do have three first-round picks. Jalen is my quarterback of the future unless we can get somebody who's better than him. Okay, so thanks for answering zero questions Mm -hmm. there. But I do believe that the entire Eagles squad uh, was knocked up yesterday. Yeah, Yeah. not enough dog mentality. You mentioned that we were on leashes all day and getting shushed. (laughs) And again, you know, when you don't play any good teams the last six or seven weeks of the season. There's a false narrative. There is a false narrative that, hey, maybe he's guys are really good and then you go down to Tampa and get fucking embarrassed. It's no, it's no fun. But, uh, but the foundation's being built for the manure. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. But again, I think we kind of showed yesterday that, hey, guess what? If Jalen has to throw football to win games, we're not going to win games. All right. Okay, oh. Jalen doesn't deserve that. He had one bad game. We'll see how it is going forward. They will be in the market, though, because three ones is a lot of ones. And I have no idea how the Philadelphia Eagles, a place that we thought was a dumpster fire, how they have three ones. Oh, because they got Carson Wentz and they got the yeah. Colts. Yeah, that's oh, right. that's right. We only have a fucking one. They can give mm. up. Yeah. Let's go to the last one here before we get out of here. This is from... Uh, Casturio. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Casturio is a square or a rectangle? A rectangle. Rectangle. And a square is a rect... A rectangle is a square, but a square is not a rectangle. Bingo. <laughs> Hashtag PMS... You all right? Yep. <laughs> Hashtag PMS... I like watching your brain work. Hashtag PMS, I don't know if reaction. The Raiders take Carr to the shed and old yell at him? Dude's never going to win a playoff game. Holy shit. The fact that the Raiders even made it to the playoffs, I think a lot of people are surprised by. Castrillo is saying, hey, excuse me, do not let that camouflage the fact that Derek Carr is not going to be able to win us the Super Bowl. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. Richie Basaccia has your families writing handwritten letters. Derek Carr says, I'll come back depending upon who the coach is. He seems to love the pies on. What are the Raiders of the future? We don't know. A lot of question marks everywhere. AJ? I feel like Derek Carr, for whatever reason, there's a lot of people that are just never going to be on board with him as their quarterback. Doesn't it seem that way? It does seem that way, especially whenever you lose uh, in the playoffs on the road to a bank. What is it? Is it his personality? Is it why? Why do people feel that way? Because the dude does make plays. Yeah, I think it's because he's getting paid a lot of money. He's like eight, year eight, year seven, year eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, year nine, I think. You know, and he's in Mahomes' division. He's in the Mahomes' division. So that's a very difficult place to be. The Raiders always win games that we don't think they're going to be able to win. Ultimately, the season ends in some sort of fashion, and we go, "Oh, the Raiders won some games. How'd that whole thing go?" Derek Carr has been a very good player for a long time. We thought he was dead on a Thursday night football oh, game. Thought yeah. he was growing out. He came back. The future massive question mark in uh, Las Vegas, obviously, Castrillo doesn't think. <clears throat> Did I hit that one right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. good. Thank you. Castrillo. <clears throat> Very nice. Ray Mastillo. Oh. And I, you know, had, had some Spanish classes together. Mm-hmm. Okay, estamos mi amigos. Okay. Yeah, a... Castrillo. I have. All right, we're out here, dude. I got a call a minute ago. No. It's going to go terribly. Why? Okay. Well, I don't know. Because they're clocked. Either. No, no, no. That is not the case. <laughs> who, is, who is it? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we got to go. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday is manana. Yeah. I can't wait for it. I bet he watched football all weekend, right, AJ? Yeah. What do you think he did all weekend? That's a great – I cannot wait to ask him. He, may, he either watched all of it or he watched none of it properly. I sent him a text saying, hey, I hope you have a good weekend. And he sent back the same. So that was well, very nice, nice of him. Good Look at us. Text he was probably – what if he was like in Bora Bora or something? He didn't. There's no pictures. Whoa. Well, we would have been able to see that because somebody would have found his ass. I don't know. Look at this immunized son of a yeah. bitch. I know that guy. Walking around. There's pictures of dudes that don't look anything like him potentially being him. <laughs> mm-hmm. I assume if he was to leave his house, 
which we've heard is oh, palatial mm -hmm. stage. In Wisconsin, people would have heard about it. All right, we're back, Minyana. Boys, did, thank you all so you. much for your effort. Did you guys pick games tonight? Oh, no. Who do you got? I got the Rams. All right, I got Cardinals plus three and a half. Boom. All right, easy as that. You got Rams minus three and a half. I got Cardinals plus three and a half. We'll have overreactions tomorrow, Aaron Rodgers. Big thanks to Kay Adams for stopping by. She's a free agent in May. Go get that bag. Okay. Lady Kay. Darius Butler, fucking awesome combo. AJ, thanks for figuring out your tech. Can't wait to talk to you more tomorrow. Hopefully, all the boys, you're the best. Hammer, Don, is in 15 minutes at yep. youtube.com forward slash hammer. Don, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.